order. Uh, date is July the 25th, 2017. And I would uh, ask that all of the presenters who are on the agenda tonight, please, please make your uh, presentations uh, concise and brief, if you will. We've got a lot on the agenda tonight. Uh, with that being said, uh, move on to the uh, minutes of June 27th. Has everyone had an opportunity to look over those minutes? I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Been approved and seconded. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Five to nothing. Did you get the parties that... Uh, was Mason and uh, Brian. Uh, the next would be the uh, Board of Works minutes that you have for uh, reference. Uh, then we move down. We have no communications tonight. Uh, new business. First on the new business, uh, we have Richard Rowe regarding city ordinance limiting number of dogs owned in the city limits. Ma'am, I apologize. There is another action item. I, I had to amend the April 25th minutes, and I need those reamended. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is the approval of amended minutes. Oh, I see. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, I see. I had omitted the agenda item for the entire conversation about the bill property on the 17th. Okay. Thank you. That okay. They read all the commission I purchased, and somehow I completely omitted that entire section on minutes. So that's what the amendment is for. So Got you in a holding okay. pattern there, Richard. We got back up here Sorry. just. We had back up here just a second for a piece of business. Okay, so those minutes for the uh, city council uh, meeting of April twenty fifth have been amended. Do I now have a motion to approve those as amended? Do we get those amended minutes? Do we get those? Yes, they were included. Uh, the amendment is on page three. Um, essentially, what it said is I added, I only added one paragraph. Terry Lee presented the council with a proposal to the redevelopment commission. The redevelopment commission has been offered an opportunity to acquire the property at 117 7th Street. The owner has agreed to a selling price of 15000 with the condition that the building be raised and cannot be renovated. The RDC plans to file the purchase agreement and raise the building, but may need some assistance with demolition costs as they have not received any quotes yet. Because the purchase price is under the state statute threshold, it does not require an action of the council to purchase the property, so this was for informational purposes. That law I added. Any other questions regarding the amendment? Okay. I have a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. I'll second. Brian moved and Marty seconded. Those in favor, raise your right hand, and it's unanimous. Okay. That takes care of our uh, of our minutes situation. Then and again, no communications. Richard, you're up now. If you would come on up to the podium and uh, for the record for the TV and the council identify yourself. Hi, my name is Richard Rowe. Good afternoon with y'all. Uh, this is new to me, but I think it's an issue that needs to be raised. Um, I would like to, oh, well, I was directed to come here and get a breeder's license. What on dogs? What, what do y'all know about that? Anything? Uh, well, there is our ordinance regarding the number of, uh, of uh, dogs, right. cats, and such that you can have does limit the number to three uh, unless you have a breeder's license. Or do, can I get a breeder's license to you guys, or do I have to ask for one? Well, uh, give us your situation. Tell us your situation. Um, uh, there's been a situation that's arose that um, two puppies have gotten out a couple different times. Puppies will be puppies, and they're not three months old, but, um, uh, you know, when, when you have somebody that, and I know there's a leash law, 
but when you got one dog on a leash and two puppies wanting to play, um, that person that's not familiar with bigger dogs, um, they get scared, they get afraid. And then I had the mother and father come out and, you know, just, uh, <clears throat> and that's what I'm dealing right now. I, you know, ever since I moved back here in 96, I've had multiple dogs, never issues. Had, they've gotten out. I've had officers come around and put them back in for me when I was trucking. And, uh, you know, I commend that to your officers. That's a great job. They can get rid of, rode up for it. I mean, you know, where's the compassion about dogs? When was the last time anybody got bitten by a dog in Rochester that was serious? to where this has to be an issue on just three dogs. And why, why do we have an issue just on three dogs? What if I was coming from Texas and uh, I got five kids and I got five dogs and I want to come to this beautiful town called Rochester, Indiana? Oh, well, I can't. I got five dogs. So, I mean, there's, there's things there that, that bother me there's things around town, I'll tell you right now, I can name 50 who have more than 10 dogs in this town. So do you want to do it? Do you want to do us all? Uh, would you like to state the instance that brought your situation to, to light? Um, not really, not at this time, Ted. Okay, okay. Uh, you're, you're right. Uh, Richard, I would say there probably are people who are breaking the ordinance that we have no knowledge of. And uh, the time that the animal control warden can address something is when something happens. Usually, unfortunately, it's a dog bite or dogs get loose or something. And that's the time when the animal control warden can address something like that. Um, I can tell you this, I don't believe anybody on this dais, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, you've been around a long time, uh, initiated that ordinance. That was initiated some time ago when there was a lot of thought given to I, you know, when how Phil, many animals you should have in the city limits. Phil, when Phil Thompson was mayor, I told him how many I had, and he said, do you have the facility to, to take care of them? And I said, yes, I do. <clears throat> and I do. But what I'm asking is, if I want to adopt dogs, um, be a foster parent, gosh almighty, I mean, where am I limited or where are we limited to help these dogs, help the animal welfare out there try to do their job too? Well, if you're doing something like that, they are, they will, they will monitor and manage your situation uh, without assuring that no ordinances or laws are being broken um, you know they they're very careful with that and, and they do have foster homes but they, they're very careful that their foster homes are still uh, operating within the guidelines of uh, the city ordinances and that's what I'm asking is to just think about maybe is this you want to stay with three dogs and just if you get caught, you get caught. If you don't get caught, good for you. Is that is that the kind of philosophy we're doing around here? I mean, everything. Everybody should be treated the same. It doesn't matter. They're still breaking the law. They're just not getting caught. Want me to help you catch them? <laughs> uh, I. That's a good question. I mean, we can't go door to door. And, 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 and all the police have so much work that they need to do mm -hmm. that they're probably so far behind on just miscellaneous crap that they don't need to mess around with something like this. The dog catchers, how many dog catchers have we been through in the last 10 years, 12 years? I can name eight. And maybe we're going to lose this guy here. So the answer is just... No, the answer is I think. Let it run wild. No, not at all. I think you should be responsible enough. And if you're going to have that many dogs, you you got to have money to feed them. You got to you got to be able to clean up their 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 poop when whenever they go poop somewhere down the road. I mean, it's it's yeah. just use your brain. I, I'm not sure, Richard. We can have this discussion in any detail without bringing up 
why it became an issue for you. And I'm, I'm not going to do that. Your, your wishes are not to do that. But ordinances, all of our ordinances are in place to make sure, you know, everybody has rights, but the ordinances are in place to make sure that Marty, I'm not, my situation, I'm not imposing on Marty's rights. Right. And that's why we have those things. Um, well, and, and correct, jump in here, anybody. I mean, what do I do? Do I go euthanize them? Because they're not, they're not going to be able to go to somebody else's home. They love me. They're, they're trained by me. They're six years old. How many do you have? I got, I got three white ones I brought in from Arkansas. And uh, I got two puppies in the house, and uh, I got the mother and father in the house, and they're 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 pretty well trained. I I uh, uh, six sounds like eight five four and two is six. Pardon? Four and two is six. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, two puppies, two in the house. How many outdoors? Two. two, six. And but. Then again, you can have two officers approach a neighbor who has eight little barking farts that run out there or 10 little barking farts that they don't follow up and say, look, you're breaking the law. You have to, you have to get rid of them. And they just moved into this, this town. They don't want to move back out. They're, and, they're, and they say they're, they got a breeder's license. Well, how do you get a breeder's license then? Well, any any special circumstance like that would come through this this council. We have, uh, it, and it, Shot has pointed out to me, we have in the past. I think you remember the lady who came to us. And she had three dogs, and then her father passed away, and she ended up with two more. And uh, you can get a special circumstance for no more than five, but the council has to approve that. And okay council has to approve that and then when your situation changes either less or you end up with six you have to let the council know that and then and then I'm the more is taken, I'm more than happy to do something like that but I mean I, I need the chance to do it I mean I just don't want to be knocked down and closed and no that's it so then what do I do well, here's what I'd suggest if you're at, you say you has five, is that what we came up with? Six. Six. And you know what? They And some of the officers have, put, like I say, Ted, have they've gotten out and, or people that like to steal and they like to cause mayhem could open my fence and let the dogs out. And then they know exactly what's going to happen. So Fulton Street's kind of a, it's become just a hard place to live. Well, even with the the, the most uh, uh, generous interpretation of the ordinance, the, the most you could have would be five if this council approved that. Okay. So you're still uh, over with six. You're, you're running over. Uh, I I would suggest council before you consider anything like that we get a report from the animal control warden uh, I'd be very interested to, to know what and, and I know you have one opinion on what your neighbors say but I'd be interested to hear from you know your neighbors and say how about what they think you know about very good you have heck, you know these dogs there yeah. I will go to each neighbor and I'll have them write something up to the council and what they think about the dogs especially the ones that's been there to more than two years um, I can bring that in um, the dog catcher I'm sure he's got what he feels but you know we're going I'm gonna to go to court I got a ticket so I got to go to court now or pay the fine I don't think I should have to pay a fine where a little puppy jumps on a little kid and, and, then, the, and then the grandmother nothing against grandmothers <laughs> Goes a shit. You're bringing your situation. Yes. No, they they were in the house. Pardon me. They were no. I have two. I have the mother and the father in the house, and I got two puppies in the house. They're not quite three months old. I think there's the dog catcher told me I could keep those two up to six months, 
without doing any problem there. So that gives me an opportunity. Do I want to sell them? Do I want to do this? And we're talking thousand dollar dogs. We're not talking about muds. So um, it's a lot of money involved, and um, I'm going to be going to court over this last one. I think it's ridiculous. These are my neighbors. These are neighbors that live two blocks down. You know what? Now, guess what? They don't walk by my house because they're probably afraid to because they called the police. And now they see me. Well, maybe he'll come out and say something or he intimidates me. You know, I, I, let's, let's be fair about this. I the, am. The grandmother and the small child were walking by and the dog came out of your house and knock the child to the ground. Two puppies did. That, that's what I didn't see it, Ted. And I believe, I, don't, I have no reason not to believe the woman, but she tongue lashed me pretty good. And you know what? You got a little child right here. You, you, you're going to use vulgar. What's that say about the grandmother? Okay. I mean, I know you guys like got a lot of things going on. But Are you looking for a period of grace then until you can get the permit is, is, is that what you're asking of that's the council, true yes or? yes that and um to learn a little more you know gosh almighty there's you know i'm not new to this town i'm uh but i come here to learn something and try to get some help if i didn't care you know what come and arrest me take my dogs and kill them if i didn't care but i care that's why I'm here. And when is your court date? Um, October 10th, I think. If I choose to go that route, I can pay the fine. But, you know, I think, gosh, I might, it's a neighbor. And I think the judge ought to hear this, too. I'm sure the dog catcher will be there, express how he feels about the situation. If you go to court, he will be there. Yeah. Of course. And But if, the, if this grandmother doesn't show up, it's dismissed. And why would a tongue lashing, gun slinging grandmother want to come and see me? Mayor, I can provide Mr. Riddle a copy of our entire ordinance regarding um, because he's touched on a lot of things that actually are covered in our ordinance. So um, I can prevent, print a copy of our entire animal control or our animal ordinance out for you to review so you can see that there's definitely pieces of what you've mentioned that are outlined in the Ted, you'd hit on something saying that the little kids got knocked down. And, you know, what's somebody to do about that? You know what? If if I saw that and it was done by a pit bull, I would be the first one there to save them people. And I think the chief has something. To Can I say a few things, please? Sure. Uh, just for clarification, um, he is in violation of our city ordinance. He was given a ticket under a county ordinance. The animal control officer can't enforce our city ordinance. Currently, you are in violation of our city ordinance, right? There's no, yeah, there's no yeah. question about that. Um, what, you, as, as a council, as a body can do, is, is grant him permission to have dogs or not. Um, me, as, as a department head, I need guidance so we know how we're going to respond. Um, I, I, we're not going to come and jerk your dogs away or, or, or write more tickets or anything, but we need to know how, how we need some guidance from now. Um, either you can say yes, grant him permission, um, or say no. That way we know going forward um, and that we're not delaying this out another month or two months. Um, so I would prefer that the council make some decision tonight. That way we know going forward how, how we should react. That's a good point. I see we got the animal control warden sitting right there. Uh, Officer Perkins, do you have anything to add? Uh, Chief John stated uh, the citation Mr. Rowe received was under a county ordinance. It had nothing to do with the number of animals. It was the action of the animals being under training repeatedly. So that was handled through me, through the county ordinance, not through the city ordinance. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Andy, I, in regards to this particular incident, <laughs> since there's pending litigation and there's a county warrant or whatever you call it I don't feel like I can get involved in that situation and if we're gonna 
entertain talking about changing the city ordinance about the number of dogs. I think we probably need a little more information before we. Understand. I would feel comfortable and I don't think doing he's asking for changing the city ordinance. Maybe you are. I don't know. But you can bring him special permission. And I and I'm asking. And that's what I think you need to come here to ask for. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Mr. Rowe, but I think you just want that special permission from the council that's in the ordinance. And I think okay. each so case first, is going to be should be. First, I heard him talk. Well, how do I get a breeder's license? Yeah. Then we got into the yeah. ordinance language, and and now we find out there's pending litigation. I. It's a mess. Yes. Even if someone moves in town and they have a breeder's license, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they still have to come to you and get permission to have more than three dogs. Correct. So even if you have a breeder's license, you would still have to get permission to have more than three dogs in town. And I don't have a problem with that. I just, I, I, I think we all that are going to have dogs like this should know and take responsibility. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, this litigation is going up there. You grant me it, I just pay the fine then. That'll be it. I won't take it to court. Well, I, personally, I don't care whether you go to court or you pay the fine. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out whether, you know, what we do on our ordinances, we've been challenged by different ordinances before um, to me and uh, stop me if I'm wrong but when somebody says a breeder's license you know what comes to my mind and I've had I've had dogs since I was always had a dog okay. and yes sir. and that well that reminds me of you that somebody is going to be breeding dogs have, have a you know a source of income something like that a, a puppy mill. I don't like that word, but it really is. I agree. Uh, but that's what when I when I when it when you say a breeder license, that's what I assume is going to be done there. Uh, not have multiple different breeds. And you have six, so the next person comes to us and has eight. Uh, where are we going to stand on the on a, when people are standing around here with a you know a less than a quarter of an acre lot, uh, most of the time an eighth of an acre lot in city. And in Fulton, I'm sure, you know, Fulton Avenue, I'm sure you're around an eighth of an acre lot. 55 so by 165. Many? 55 by 150? 140? 165. Okay. So, you know, uh -huh. one of my first things I think, is that fair that my first deal is, is that fair of the dogs? You know what? You know, it, they should be able to have a, a you know, they should have a domain to run on themselves. Okay. Uh, and I think in a situation like that, if I personally, was ever going to move out into the country. I have one dog right now. If I was going to move out into the country, you know what? I probably have five or six. I like them. I love dogs. I think they're great. But you have to think it was good for them also. And I don't think it's for our our city in a small, even fenced in area with the remains that these dogs are going to be leaving on a daily basis because believe me, I know it's like Terry Bucket around every other day. It's not so much a bucket. It's it's with five, six dogs, I can't imagine. Uh, but it's you go health, buy a tiller. There's a health issue. There's a health you issue. Tiller. Also, I mean, there's a health issue in my opinion. There also, I don't know. You know what? It's been since 1996, and I've had eight dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can show any police records or anything at all, or me fines or anything at all, I, I'm done. Well, I'll euthanize them all, mm -hmm. and we'll be done with it. I, I don't think that's a, the, the part of the issue. That we're I don't think it is. I think yeah. you, you put me right over the top. Yeah. I'll be done. I'm not. I apologize for clarification. Also, in our city ordinance, the definition of a kennel is a place primarily for keeping four or more adult dogs or other small animals that are ordinarily bred for sale as pets. Also, could include temporary care facility for compensation. Includes any premises where in any person engages in the business of boarding, breeding, buying, letting for hire, training for a fee, or selling dogs and cats. That's in our ordinance. Um, the definition of a kennel, and I've been trying to quickly see if I could find anywhere else where it references a kennel. Um, but I, um, given the circumstances, I'm, I, I'm not sure if the council has had an opportunity to fully read the ordinance, and I'm not sure that you have either. Um, so as I'm trying to find things so that you guys can, I'm trying to, you know, as you bring things up like John said with a kennel, you know, you mentioned breeding. I think he's hit it right on the button. Because as a law officer, he's supposed to do what? He's supposed to 
Sure. He's supposed to follow the, the law, right. and uh, this body uh, makes the laws. But as I understand the situation now, I'm listening to everyone, you're, you weren't cited for having six dogs. You were cited for not having your dog properly leashed and under control. I want to come here before this, the, before I do get a citation. Yeah, I've been given a warning. He's been given a warning, yeah. I see. And okay. when told, uh, that, that's typically our, our process. If we find out, and yes, I'm sure there are more people than just you that have more than three dogs. Um, we're not going out the order door. If it's presented to us, we address it. If it's presented to us, we address it. We give them a warning, have them, give them an opportunity to, to remove the dogs from the home, get find them a new home, or come to the city council and ask for a special Mind that I have a 10 foot fence in my backyard that was accepted by Phil Thompson. I, I got special because of the dogs. Um, like I say, if you don't want to make a decision tonight, let me go get the neighbors. And if you're concerned about how the feces smells or anything like that, they're going to be the ones that are going to tell you, and they're not going to lie. And I do take care of that. I have a tiller, and it's my backyard's tilled up. It's not. It's not a beautiful backyard, but. It is what it is. That's my life right now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Continue. All okay. right. Do I uh, stay around or can I send me a letter or something? Yeah, question before you go. What's that? Uh, is this done, said, or do I wait for you to send me a letter? Or well, you just said you were going to go around and petition your neighbors. The, I'll ask you. That would help. I would suggest you do those kinds of things and then get back on the agenda if you expect. Well, then we have to make but, a decision. Yeah. Uh, then are we going to do, oh, it's 30 days before our next council meeting. Right. Are we going to overlook our ordinance for the 30 days in this <clears throat> in this How capacity? Does, or, or are we going to enforce it? That's, uh, I think that is the question is. That's coming up. Yeah, I we have an ordinance. I mean, it, yeah. are we going to say okay, we can? If, if we're asking him to go to neighbors and come back in a month, we should grant him a special exemption for that thirty days, in my opinion. If, if we're telling him go do stuff and come back, then should have a special exemption until the next meeting. You want to put that? I'm not an attorney. I would recommend putting some stipulation on it um, because my fear is. Obviously, we've had one incident. That's not the first incident. What if we give him permission and then something else happens? Yeah. Okay. Then who's going to be liable? Are we going to be liable for her not following up? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Well, we're, oh, we're, not, we're not saying he can leave his dogs off the leash. We're saying well, he can have. So they if they're off the leash, that's, a whole, that's a whole different ordinance. Right. You know, they're. they're Beautiful dogs. They're not hurting anybody. I'm not doubting that at all. We're just talking about the problem. Once and, and yeah, we, we can't. If that mean, happens again, I we don't want to be. Grand. What's the stipulations of the warning? What what time limit does the warning? Give? Uh, you usually give them about two weeks. Um, for the, uh, did they give you write down a time limit on your warning? Uh, uh, I'll tell you. I'll give them a couple of weeks or tell them to get on the agenda with the council if you want to get that special permit. Well, I would, I would, I would have to say if the council extended that period of time by two weeks, give it a month, we're under no uh, more liability than we are during the two-week warning period. Yeah. I, mean, I would we say, grant special exemption until the next meeting, um, and if there's any other issues in the meantime, then. Oh, well, yeah. I guess yeah. I'll take another ticket. <laughs> well, 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 you might be able to yeah. want to pursue the license also. So you this have time that period. coverage, yes. I, I do have all their shots, and they're, they're rabies shots. And I mean, that's an issue, too, that people around here don't do that. Well, and, um, but, mm, of I, course, I, you can only answer for yourself. You can't answer for the other individuals. Um, and, and like Officer Schott said, you did they don't have the uh, capability to have this research by the officers. It would be on an uh, a situation where, like, what happened like something me. happened. So, I I would say you would want to probably go ahead and pursue that to maybe extend your the likelihood of possibly having 
some protection of having losing a, a dog. Yeah, it, was it five on the kennel? Five, there's three five. dogs, five animals total. Five and animals total on the kennel. Is there is a requirement within our it's, ordinance that requires the property owner to keep the animal under control at all times of restraint. So if the animal is unrestrained, unrestrained. that is a different piece to our ordinance than just housing six dogs. So that would be, you guys are just granting the exception that he can have the six dogs, but you are not negating the other side of the ordinance that he is still required to keep it under restraint or keep it Yes, yeah, it must, be, it must be restrained. You Follow would have been cited if it had only been one dog because of the actions of the dog. So you're, you're basically here because of your warning. Yeah, I'm here because I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm scared because I don't want to lose my dogs. Yeah. First step is keeping them keep them controlled. Uh, and we've, I, right we've, out the door. we've heard that before. Yeah. On different I, on I different species of animals that we've had in our city that we had to deal with. But I can I, I honestly I gotta prove myself to you to where I know and I know the past. But I, does someone want to make a motion to extend Mason already has Mason did. Okay. Yeah. but that will make it the uh, the next, the next meeting twenty second of August. Mm -hmm. Your warning period. Uh, Mason has made the uh, motion. Anybody second it? I'll second it. Karen seconds it. Those in favor of extending the uh, warning period time till the 22nd? I will. Two. Okay. Those extending the warning period, period. until right. our next yeah. meeting. 22nd. Yes. Not, That's not granting. Taking. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. 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 And at that time, I need to have some information from the have your ducks in a row to yep. have ask for uh, uh, an exception for five instead of the three. That's what you need to be prepared for. Okay. Those well, in favor? To, yeah, I was going to say need to vote. Before. Need to vote. Those in favor? <laughs> yes. Okay. I need to stay in your honor. Uh, Mr. Mayor. You have a dog? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's got a dog in the hunt. Okay. Uh, Representing the room before. Oh, okay. All right. yeah. you know, it is, it generally, for the city at large, I'm not opposed to it, but I need to at least the council know that. I don't remember Four. you. <laughs> Four <laughs> yes, one at one extension. Thank you. So you can Thank talk you. Thank you. Second. All right. See you. Mr. Okay. Mayor, before we move on, with regard to the prior minutes that we approved, did we just approve one? Three days came through. Yeah, there was a, I caught that too, but I didn't we want to put him on yeah. the meeting again. Sure. We had a regular meeting June 27th, special oh, meeting July 5th, and we special meeting July 11th, and then the amendment amended April 25th. And we voted on the regular meeting and the April 25th. And yeah. then, so we unless, need a special meeting, so special meeting for this year. Unless you want to amend your motion to include the other meeting. Well, prior to that, though, oh, I to change you got to change that on the... Yes, I did. I, I did. Did you put your name on there? Well, my name's not there. It's absent. Okay. I did change my copy. <laughs> you are correct. That was. Two members have already signed that, so okay. I just wanted to. I'll just write it on there and then I'll just file that copy. Okay. So, do we need that to approve the minutes of the other meetings? Of the Approve the minutes yeah. of the, the special meeting on July the 6th. Yeah, I'll amend my motion on that first one to include the special meeting of July 5th and the special meeting July 11th. Second. I need to include, there was an omission of uh, Councilman Fitzwater. He was president of the 11th. I had him, so I've got that correction. Okay, we're all set. Okay, next would be the uh, Redevelopment Commission. And uh, <laughs> We have a resignation and need an appointment. Terry, would you like to speak to that? Sure. Uh, yeah, Ben Woodcox, who is a county, uh, excuse me, a council uh, appointee, um, has had to resign his post uh, when he was for, I think, almost five years now. So I appreciate his volunteer service to the Redevelopment Commission. And so his appointment uh, would be from the council. Um, typically, the council would. Um, Need any kind of uh, consultation with me on what we do or potential candidates? Uh, that's fine. I can bring that. Uh, current other members are uh, Kendra Chavinsky, uh, Ruth from Evergreen, who's younger. Um, help me out, Ted. Uh, Enid Tate Shepard. Enid. And we 
we've had a couple changes recently. Say, bring your lunch. There's my pizza. Okay. Uh, does everybody uh, think that's Yeah, good? I'd yeah. appreciate if you'd bring some candidates to us and, uh, for our consideration. And if you guys have any nominees, take them to me and I'll put them out for a result of the I always like to, you know, the mayor makes a couple of appointments, but I, I always like to see people who have skin in the game, if we can get them mm -hmm. involved, that's always a good thing. Uh, owners of buildings downtown or businesses or whatever, that's always uh, good to have at the table. Uh, okay, that brings us to the uh, downtown partnership, uh, follow up for director salary and requested items, 712 Main Street, Amy Rowe. first order of business on the agenda is the request so we had come before the uh, budget hearings for the city uh, from the Rochester downtown partnerships perspective related to some potential requests that we felt were essential to move forward in 2018 and during that conversation we were asked to provide some additional information to amend that and then to more fully uh, build that out. So if you look at that request, um, we have taken off the planters as it was noted that the planter costs are in the Board of Works budget. Is that correct, Shada? Correct. So we did not have to put that in there. Um, we looked at the city contribution as Mayor Ted Denton had asked us to not only one, research the potential salaries of uh, directors for Main Street programs in the area, um, but in addition also to have the Rochester Downtown Partnership to fine tune um, and create a draft of the uh, job description. It was noted by Councilman Smith that he wanted us to meet with the theater group to see if there was a potential possibility of assisting them with duties and adding that to the job, the job description. Sarah Reese had met with the group and spoken to Emily um, Godchalk and she stated that she did not feel at this time that they would have something that she could do to be able to assist them. So we went back and just kept the job description as noted. So I've provided the job description. That job description has not been voted on um, and confirmed and approved by the board of directors of the Rochester Downtown Partnership because that meeting is not till Thursday. 
So unfortunately, this meeting came before that meeting. Um, if you look at the, uh, tw the 2018 City of Rochester RDP amended budget request, that shows the amendment uh, moving from 20,000 to 40,000. And that is because the three uh, quotes that I had received from three of the Main Street programs one of them, which is Logan's Landing, obviously that is in Logansport, Indiana, that shows a salary of $32,600 a year with 40 hours and four weeks of paid holiday. The Wabash Marketplace, which is ob obviously in Wabash, Indiana, that shows a salary of $35,000 a year. These are, this is information that I have. Um, they give a $2,500 insurance <coughs> stipend, 10 days paid time off, and seven six days sick days. Uh, and then I actually received from the state of Indiana, the young lady that is the director of the Main Street program, Mary Shaw, she stated as quoted that uh, she did a quick review of full-time salaries at the beginning of this current year and found that the highest paid full-time Main Street director in Indiana made $58,000 per year and that the lowest salary was $28,000. The median salary was 35,000 and the average hourly salary was um, for a part-time director was $21 per hour. So as we obviously crunch numbers and looked at the potential for um, any incidentals and also the uh, payroll taxes, we rounded it up to $40,000 for that. Um, in addition, you'll see an additional um, community development line, which I will speak about second. Um, so that we'll have further conversation because that is related to the 712 Main Street building. Uh, but this is the amended budget as requested. Um, obviously it says below that please note that above requests reflect the requested changes per initial city budget conversations and additional requests which the RDP feels is essential to the vitality and future of downtown Rochester. If agreed upon by the Common Council, this amended budget would still need to be voted on by the Rochester Downtown Partnership Board of Directors at the next meeting, which is Thursday. Um, before final adoption. So, requested information given. Is there any additional question besides the $10,000 mystery request? Obviously, uh, Mayor Ted Denton, I know that we had spoken about, and I think Shada and I had spoken about needing to, and Terry, whoever he's at, about going before the county council because it was noted that that money would have to come from seeded funds. And I have spoken to Brian Lewis and followed up with him and Terry about that. So I believe that we're having an additional meeting after this at some point, whenever it is, the meeting is set to discuss how that will go. I think August 8th or 9th is when we have to move um, forward with discussing county budget night. Okay. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just perusing the job description a little bit. I asked, uh, what I asked for the job description, I guess I, what I was looking for was, what is the objective? What, what will this person be uh, reviewed against on an annual basis? What are the goals and objectives here? Uh, it starts out by saying that the, the executive director serves as the chief executive officer for the board of directors. And then it says the executive director is administratively responsible to and serves under the direction of the board of directors. So it's CEO of the board of directors, but the board of directors gives the CEO direction. It follows, I mean, yeah, no, understood. It follows the line of basically what I have to as far as my duty with the chamber is that I, pro I provide direction for the chamber, but the chamber employs me. So my board of directors are who chooses to hire or fire me, obviously, if I do not fulfill their wishes. Um, but at the same time, then I am given the ability to be able to fulfill the duties with the chamber, to provide strategic planning, um, and to, to ensure that the organization is viable um, and that we are moving to do what we were created to do in the obviously for the Rochester Downtown Partnership, the mission being that the Rochester Downtown Partnership is part of the Indiana Main Street 
with the sole purpose to provide revitalization um, and forward movement of downtown Rochester, Indiana. Whatever that, that looks like, whatever duty that could be, it could be what Mason is working on, which is the IUK presentation of a economic development vitality project. It could be uh, Harry Webb working on bike racks and needing uh, Sarah or whoever the individual is to do an application to the community foundation. Um, it could be if there is a tourism video and that needs to be uploaded to the website, it could be something as simple as, simple as that. There's an event and specific documents. So if it is that you need some sort of uh, review, we can also create that, I would think so. Um, Amy, who does those chores now? Um, that is actually part of, I'm having to do some of that, which uh, this basically to cover that because I'm not gonna let the organization fail. Um, my board uh, has, was gracious to allow the Rochester Downtown Partnership to work under the umbrella of the chamber. Um, my job for the first year was to uh, help them to get their 501c3 and to launch them. And the launch of that organization was for the sole purpose of being able to have the full rights of being able to revitalize. And what that means is that with that, they are given the right to be an applicant for specific grants. Um, for example, the grants that Terry's pursuing with the theater program, uh, those would actually be unavailable if the Main Street program was not in function. Um, and so when the organization was launched in January of 2016, 2017, yeah, 20. Yes. Sixteen. Yes. So it was decided that 2017, uh, Sarah Reese would act as the volunteer executive director, um, and that we would pursue, based on um, lots of requests, pursue finances in other realms. And so we pursued doing fundraisers and pursued sending out um, every door direct mailing uh, to receive any sort of fundraising that we could to be able to support it on our own. In addition, we did research to figure out what other mainstream <coughs> organizations were doing to cover that just because we were unaware. Um, and so I myself and Sarah have met with multiple organizations um, it is noted that most of those organizations do actually put a line from either the city or the county. Generally, that is based on seeded funds. Um, it has been noted by uh, Mayor Long of Wabash, and I let Mayor Ted know this, uh, that he had stated if there was any confusion from the councilman or uh, Mayor Denton himself, that he would answer any personal questions related to how that process works and how they maneuver through um, <laughs> providing a line item they basically said this is a city or county contribution. That's what they call it. They don't call it a salary. Obviously, I think that's probably for legal purposes. Um, Shot ahead, let us know. But they do that um, saying this is the city or this is the county. And then the Main Street organization is given the license to do with it as they will. And generally for Wabash, Logan Sport, uh, Goshen, all of these organizations take that money and they fund um, a full-time director to ensure that all the tasks are done and that they're done effectively because it's a bit difficult to try to manage with a volunteer, a full-time volunteer who has to work a full-time job and then I myself having the kind of attempt to have the conflict of interest there to try to carry that, that just gets a bit complicated. So we're, so Mayor Denton had stated that he felt that the organization was essential and that we were to look at what that looks like to follow what other organizations in the region are doing. Yeah, I, well, I just wanted to make sure we're not, we don't have a duplication of effort here. Mm -hmm. Well, once, yeah, once the actual full-time employee comes in, I get to just focus on chamber and tourism. Okay. So that is what will happen is that I will, uh, be given the license to stand away from all of that. Um, and then I would just sit as an um, ex officio on the board. I would no longer be an official board member. I would just be an ex officio board member um, from the chamber's perspective. Um, and that would be my sole purpose. So once this is accomplished, then we can actually 
work on pulling the trigger for completely separating the organizations and providing um, the essential forward movement that it needs. I've been a bit on life support, but they've done an absolute amazing job with just volunteers. I've been impressed with the work that they've done, and I think people have noticed it. Um, and that is basically done all on volunteers and just my extra volunteer time from when the chamber lets me put my time and effort towards that. So, is Terry part of the board? He is not um, okay. at the moment, but that was one of the um, goals for next year. Is that we were building in capacity, so we had to do some special exceptions for the board as we were growing. So the goal and intention for that board is to build it out with less city officials, because technically those positions cannot go into a position of president um, or vice president of the organization. Um, that is advice that was given by our community liaison. Okay. Well, so, I, I, I would I would mention Terry's not a city official. He is a uh, yes, no. private uh, private entity. Yes. Uh, in charge of economic development and, and so this, and like I said this smacks of seated is smacks of economic development all over amen. And I'm trying to get the picture here if somebody came in who was say interested in our Bailey building would this person be one of the people who would grab hold of this person and walk them through the walk and yes because that's part of the next conversation is that anything pertained to downtown would be under the Rochester downtown partnerships a, you know that would be under their designation to be able to assist with that they would be um, having a stake in that because otherwise they're not fully doing the job that they've been created to do so um, that's in partnership obviously with Terry um, and Fedco uh, obviously in uh, partnership with the theater group because they provide the opportunity for the theater group to actually fill out and to submit the applications because one of the requirements for that is that there's a uh, fully functioning uh, Main Street program that is up with its annual report, which is what the director has to do, is the annual report um, to Okra or Indiana Main Street. But yes, Terry, um, at some point, the whole point of that was that at some point, um, the goal and intention is to go back into the strategic planning at the end of the year and to look at the board and other um, parts of the functioning. This has to be settled first, and then we can actually dream and, and move on and actually build out the organization as it was intended to be. Yeah, if I could add, I mean, one of the things about the uh, downtown partnership with Main Street organization that's good, I mean, there's the Economic Vitality Committee, mm -hmm. right? Um, that really kind of would be some boots on the ground to help support my efforts in terms of turning over some of the small retail spaces and things like that downtown, but then also they are charged with what promotions, which help draw, you know, individuals downtown for events and things like that. So Promotions also committee design, would do that. Design mm -hmm. elements, um, you know, like uh, just architectural design, facade program, the redevelopment commission helps fund, um, you know, bike racks, signs, lighting, stuff like that. So. And part of that partnership is already happening. Terry has been sitting on the economic vitality. He is not on the board, but he's sitting on the economic <laughs> vitality committee with um, myself and with Mason. And actually, I'm not going to go, but the gentleman will be going to IUK, to Kokomo, uh, to preview the uh, presentation that that school of business actually is putting together for a market analysis of Fulton County and looking at a business retention, attraction, and expansion plan. And that's to support uh, Terry and what he's doing. But he sits on that committee with Mason uh, to move that forward. Okay. So what are you asking for from the council? Well, I'm... Fulfilling the request that was asked of me, I guess, at, our, at, our budget at the budget hearing. And so I guess I just need to know what you need me to do as a next step. Um, obviously, I know what the next step is for the city contribution from our conversation prior was that we would sit down all together and, and speak about that separately. Um, at least that's the way I took it from the emails that had went back and forth between all of us for that to look at suggesting that to the county meeting on August 9th. Oh, the seated funds? Mm -hmm. the seated for the city contribution, you're that looking, part. You're looking for $40,000 out of the Rochester portion of seated funds. That was to be the determined, South. yeah, that was to be determined by our conversation, as I understood from the conversation with you and with Terry and with Brian. Oh. As I don't know where you had decided, you had just requested that I get the details and that we would sit down and further discuss what that looks like. 
I'm starting out, I'd like some input I, from this council. It's, it's our economic development monies, and as you know, that uh, back in 1991, all the economic development monies pools, the seeded funds were all put into one pool and it's controlled by the county. So Terry goes to the county every year to uh, get his portion of economic development funds from that pool that's, uh, like I say, controlled by the county. So it would have to go through the county, but um, you're looking for support from uh, the city. Yes, I was following up on the request and, and assure, ensuring that this is what you were requesting the information for so that we could move to the next step. And obviously there's one other piece to that, which was the, that we'll speak about next. Um, but obviously the main part of this specific conversation is based on the salary request that you had requested the information and confirming that that's what we were looking at. And I guess ensuring. And one of the things, and I'll second, is I'm, I'm also serving on the RDP board and, um, currently as the vice president special exception for the state because I am elected You're official. elected official. Correct. Um, the, one of the things on our agenda for Thursday will be to approve with the, because we wanted to make sure that the council, that you would be in favor of pursuing, moving forward with supporting the seated fund request, but we need to determine what the exact salary amount is going to be for the executive director. So once, but we needed Amy at request to get those numbers. Has so that, that, that already been confirmed that we have an executive director and that we're going to create another position? No, we As already you have said, that we, we, no, it's we already been determined? One. Right. The, the executive director, we have the position, but right now it's volunteer. Okay, that's what I was assuming. Yes, you know, yes okay. currently it's volunteer, volunteer unpaid, completely unpaid. Correct. Um, so uh, the RDP board will need to determine exactly what that salary is going to look like. So for purposes of tonight, I had recommended to Amy to ask the 40000 because based on the numbers that she had gotten, we're looking at a, a mid-range of thirty to 35000 for that salary request. And then by the time you add in your payroll taxes, things like that, you know, you want to make sure that we have all those expenses covered in one fell swoop. So that's where the 40000 came from. But the, the, uh, I don't believe that the salary will be 40000 mm -hmm. It'll be somewhere in that median range of other directors within the same size or close to the same size that we are. But again, the RDP board has will need to vote on that formally at our next meeting. Before they would be able to work with the team to do the official request right. before the right. county. But that counts. will happen before it goes to the county for the official request. We just would like to know whether we would have the support of the council to move forward with that request um, through FEDCO, through CDID, all that. Minutia that Mayor Ted was just talking about. I won't speak for these two, but I know Brian and Mason uh, and myself have been pretty involved in this process uh, at different steps and different levels, but uh, certainly have been involved. And quite honestly, uh, the, the work that has been done by Amy Shada, the committee, Sarah, has been unbelievable and there's no way they can continue what they're doing without this person in my opinion this position and if we're really going to be making a step and a statement about the revitalization of downtown rochester um, i have no troubles with support of the of the forty thousand dollars use of the seed of funds and like I said I'm not I'm not talking for them I I kind of think I maybe know how they feel but uh, we're not on uh, similar committees we're all doing different things but I know that these two guys uh, along with myself have spent quite a bit of time uh, in committee work and and looking at what they're doing and They've been doing some really great things, and um, it's it's been really I think it's starting to show a little bit in downtown as as we're moving forward. But for what it's worth, that's how I feel. Appreciate that. Anybody? Any other comments? I'll second that. <laughs> 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 we're trying to 
you back on track, right? Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, a little words like it. So, is, are you guys putting this in a motion to support this effort to the, I guess it would be to, uh, for the city council to support this effort and going forth to the county council and requesting the seated distribution for this position. Pending the support of the Rochester Downtown Partnership Pending. Board, which I'm assuming would be like a hands down, but we obviously have to go through the process. Yeah. I was gonna say, I can't yeah. see any of us jumping up and down and saying, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. We might do it just to give Sarah some grief, but. <laughs> Do you actually need a motion or do you just need a show I, of support I, I don't for your know. RDP so meeting? Uh, and we do have the money, just, correct? For this, you know. Well, through CETA, yes. Not for the CETA, but for the other, the other, the other. Oh, for the, the grant. Signage, oh, you know what I mean? It's like signage. And, yeah, and, and I can go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I can go back and we can wait till I finish the second if you would like to, to make the full. I would keep, so my, personally, I think we would want to keep the salary separate okay because the other pieces to answer your question John yes um, but those pieces would be separate from this because those would come from different funds other than seated so okay that would be but I would put it in the form of a motion just so that when I document it in the minutes it's, it's on the record correct I don't know that it's necessary but just for more formal purposes then I would I would move that the uh, city would um, use forty thousand dollars of the seated funds for the purpose of funding the administrator for the Rochester downtown development. I'll second. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, it's unanimous. You've got the support of the council. Perfect. Moving forward to the next council. Yes, and so just to be clear, that <coughs> conversation, I believe when I had spoken to Brian Lewis, that that would have to come from a seated request that Terry has to do, correct? So I would need to provide Terry with the information to do that, is that? Okay. So you just let me know what you need. Cool. Okay. Moving on. So the second part of that is based on the addition on the budget. As you see, there's a, a line that says community development. Um, it is dual in purpose, the conversation that for the uh, 712 Main Street uh, part of that, the first part, um, we'll do this and then we'll follow up with that is, um, and I'll give a little backstory. Um, obviously, I'm standing here on behalf of the Rochester Downtown Partnership again, <laughs> um, hopefully for one of the final times, uh, and also a team of revitalizers. Um, gentlemen, if you could raise your hands if you're part of that team. Um, so the, this is the revitalizers. Yes, that, I've made that name up for them. Is that like the motorcycle <laughs> group or something? Okay. okay. Um, and so, just to give a, a quick background, and then I'll, since I know that we're short on time, um, is that this team, uh, which we connected with an individual that would like to invest, um, has been working closely with Terry, myself and a few other folks um, to look at the possibility of purchasing the Bailey's building, obviously that's 712 Main Street, and um, the potential possibility of moving forward with a brewery, obviously on the bottom floor, um, and then apartments on the top. So the team that sits here um, is the potential uh, brew team, as we call them. Okay, this is just a small, small thing, but have you checked with the alcohol board. See Corey what? and I actually drove to Bristol today. <laughs> okay. So, yes, so we drove all the way. Location. What was that? It would work in that location. Yes, yeah, we had to check all the specific, we've spoken to um, an attorney at the state uh, and looked into it uh, multiple ways just to make sure that we weren't missing anything. Um, our final conversation today with the office in Bristol was that uh, they stated that you could have a brew license, um, and then the gentlemen, depending upon how the contract is finalized, um, are looking at supplementing that with a wine license um, to serve wine um, with the beer in the potential restaurant that is being proposed so that um, there's a dual partnership. There are no three-way licenses, which Don knows, um, left, whether it's carry out or not carry out. Uh, there's no three-way licenses left in general. Um, so the only one that's left is a wine license. We found that out today. Um, obviously, more details have to be finalized in the 
plan before we move forward. So today I'm here just to speak about a couple things that I needed to, that Shada felt that I needed to kind of bring to the attention so that we could make sure that we're not missing anything before moving forward on the final details. So. Right, because that could be a real <coughs> ice killer. Yes, it could. Our, uh, <laughs> might, <laughs> no pun intended. You might write down the name of Tom Sawyer. He's uh, on our local alcohol board. Mm -hmm. Can be a good liaison to help. Yes, because as I believe and understand is that the brewery license does not have to go before the local board, but the wine license does have yes. to go for the, before the local board for approval before moving forward. So um, it would be essential to speak to him to ensure that we're good with that specific part of things. So, um, so going back to the specific project, um, the gentlemen have been working um, in combination um, with multiple people to move the project forward, obviously understanding that the Bailey's building um, per the bank's statement is probably on its last leg. I would think that John Garrett would probably agree with that. Um, unfortunately, it's deteriorated. Um, there's a noted deterioration of continued $35,000 in repairs every year, um, or actually it was from uh, April of 2016 until now. That continues to um, accelerate. So uh, the bank has um, spoken to us and has noted that they would like to turn and burn the building because they would like to move forward, obviously noting that the bricks on the back aren't gonna get any better um, and the liability that they hold on that is very large. So um, they have decreased the uh, price of the building, the purchase price to $15,000, um, noting that it needs to move. Um, and so part of that though um, is that with the investors, um, and the team of revitalizers working on the plan, um, they, as their business plan shows, um, part of being able to financially do this because it's not financially viable in certain areas, it's got to such a deteriorated state that they would need a special exception. Um, and obviously we need a special exception based on the ordinance, you know, number 03-2016. Um, here under B, number one says brick and or ornamental decorative masonry material will be used for all new exterior wall reconstruction and construction for any building or structure visible from any alley or street. All materials must be conducive to the historical intent of the corridor as defined by the City of Rochester Common Council. No other construction material is allowed. So as they are looking at the financial viability of how do you move a project that is this large forward, um, the special exception to put a uh, block versus brick um, is what they would like to come before. So I have uh, some details based on that to explain um, what that special exception that they're requesting um, is for. And obviously that gives two options. Um, because we want to make sure that we're as fair as possible in the request. And the reason I'm making the request is that um, obviously the represent the Rochester Downtown Partnership is working with them um, and that there is no final. You get it? Do we need one more? No. Is it one sheet? Yep, one sheet. Yes, one sheet. We got plenty. It's better to be oh, it's better to be over prepared, correct? Just leave my copies out there, John. I'll grab them. So if you'd like to read that and just see what that notes. You're talking, okay, I haven't read it all, but I assume we're talking about the back wall. Yes, yes sir, the okay. back wall. Mm -hmm. okay. So the front wall would, obviously, the historical yeah. uh, nature of the building from the front, so obviously it would um, be in our in the um, individual's best interest to ensure that that continues to look attractive. Uh, so that would be, obviously. Which, in my opinion, makes sense because that is that is the historical oh, building God. in the core. That, yeah, yeah, and that is why I think the bank, even though they are not here, that is one of their points is that they feel that to be able to make sure that that building is not another Acre, Acre Opera House, which I hate to bring that up, but that it would be falling down. They want to do everything they can to support the efforts of the investors and the revitalizers, which I just gave them that name this afternoon at 4.30, um, that they <laughs> might have to get t-shirts, but. Um, These are the investors? Right? The investors revitalizers, that's what we call them. So um, there is one other in individual who is not here at the moment, um, 
who is going to potentially put a, a large amount of money into the project. Um, those details haven't been confirmed um, at the moment. There's negotiation going on. So Are you guys doing this for beer? <laughs> uh, if, you if you don't, if you here, isn't there? Yeah, um, yeah. I wish we could have brought beer to taste because I have not tasted beer that has been more of this for our community. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Rochester needs some help that we can find a way of bringing people to our community. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I applaud you for that. But, uh, so we've got a, a lot we've of tech point work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So obviously, uh, you know, Terry and I have been working on a brewery for a long time and have went through it like about a thousand times to try to find a successful brewer. And um, these guys came out of the middle of nowhere and basically declared that they've been drinking beer for a long time and brewing it as well. Um, and then I didn't believe that it was good until I actually went to their home and drank a couple beers and realized that it's very unique. Hey, you're getting off track. Ain't yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, you open the door, Ted. Too much information. You open the door. Don't open the door for me. Too much information. Don't open the door. So anyways, okay. point being, uh, obviously to be able to potentially to move forward, uh, obviously this all of these would be contingent upon the final contract that would be uh, written, signed, sealed, and delivered. Um, so this is the special exception. Uh, at this moment, the total repair cost for the back wall uh, per the architect um, that was employed to look at that is $187,000. Um, the potential investor is absorbing $100,000. And so obviously this special exception and the other thing I will speak about would be able to offset some of those costs to make sure that the project is viable for everybody um, and that everyone wins and no one loses their shirt. So the first part is the special exception. Obviously that has to go through the council. Gary Madlam, uh, he, I went to them. Um, he connected with Casey um, and they confirmed that because of the ordinance that would, that would have to be moved forward through. I move we right. give that property special exemption to use block instead of brick on the back wall. Is there a one or two option? I There's a two options. Yes. Option one sounds like the route to take, doesn't it? I mean, is that the preferred? That's the preferred route, obviously, but because of the fact that there was not an understanding of which direction the council would go, obviously the other option was uh, presented, but option one has been the one that has been spoken about the most. Well, you reference World Graphics out of Plymouth to create a vinyl sign or advertisement to cover the obvious transition from brick to block. What what does that entail? What's that? And those details are being worked out with the investor at the moment. Um, so that would that was a request. So from, it would be a block wall mm -hmm. in the alley, but with a vinyl. Well, it's something on it. From what it looks like, it'll be brick up to the third floor, and then the, th the whole third floor will be block. Oh, I, I see. Believe. So there, there'll see. be the brick to block transition. I see. And that's where we want to ensure that it doesn't look unsightly, because Mason can see it from his house. So yeah. <laughs> still better okay. than a hole in the wall. <laughs> well, I guess I was Just wondering, saying. why are we voting on this now if they, if they haven't purchased the building? There's no contract. There's nothing going on. Yeah, we have to do this because the um, the bank has noted that the purchase of the building has to be done by the end of the month uh, because they are tired of having it in their coffers. So I understand that part. What are they going to do with it after the end of the month? They're still going to have it. They're going to still have it. Else buy it. Okay, so yeah, but they noted that basically they would prefer if we would move it, it forward prefer. quickly. I like that word. Yeah. Prefer. Not that we have to. So yeah, prefer. Like, it would be the, the preferred. Yeah, it would be There's the preferred, preferred direction. Yeah. Help financially make sure the numbers work. And I guess so on, the, on the good for. side of it is, John, that if you do decide to move forward, that you have the option to either sell the building or move it forward. June 24th, 2014. Yeah, uh, that building came before the council mm -hmm. for an affirmation order to Casey's office, which in November then was several times yes. to the Board of Works also. Yes. 
And, so, and I'm, I'm all for approving the option, but I don't think we can do, t I mean, we can't really do too much, except for say, yeah, go ahead with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that's, I mean, I think fine. for it, I mean, do you, I mean, yeah, for th that, and that, but it's, that's until exactly something's, what they're looking for. Sure. Yeah, the special, that's, all, that's gonna make all the difference in the world, Lake City? To Lake City Bank? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that would well, assist the process. Because they know that. there's a, there's a stipulation <clears> as to our uh, downtown historical, Order ordinance that we would be re relieving that restriction for this particular option. Yeah, obviously, if there was any other building that anybody needed to have a special exception that fell outside of, you know, if it fell outside of that ordinance, then obviously they would have to come back again. So this is just asking for the Bailey's building, that property, the back wall, um, either choosing option one or two, allowing them contingent upon everything being finalized that they would be able to have kind of a pre-approval um, of that special exception. Option one is what you all want, right? Okay, it's enough said and done. Yeah. yeah. So, so we just need a formal motion on that. Well, the, 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 motion. Well, the, the, the bank just wants to know whether we would approve one or two, some type of special exception, or do we have to, do we have to choose one or the other? And more importantly, does Andy need to prepare anything for us to vote on before we can make anything formal. Andy doesn't need to prepare anything legal. It's already because it's already written in the ordinance that, that all it takes is a motion from the council okay. to approve the alternative solution to a brick facade. So that's just notated right. in the minutes and yep. it's taken if care of. They're the guys that are going to be doing it. If they want option, option one, one. And then you know, we approve. The motion was for option one. one, was it not? Option one. Yeah, I was second that. I, I was second that motion. Okay. I have a motion from Mason to approve uh, a relaxation <coughs> of our. Historical corridor ordinance uh, in favor of option one for the back of the Bailey's building and a second by John. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand and it is five zero. Perfect. Go for it. I just really like to know what that vinyl is going to look like. That <laughs> we'll get back to you. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, the other part of it goes back to this very quickly um, is that uh, based on that looking at the finance part of uh, the project. Um, I've been speaking with Shada and um, attempting to figure out the cost, the $87,000 that the individual is um, choosing to, um, or the $100,000 that the individual is choosing to eat. Um, also, there's an $87,000 um, that we are looking at covering uh, to assist in that project from the um, assistance of Terry and myself, the Rochester Downtown Partnership, working on that, trying to figure out how we can ensure that this project is viable for everybody and moves forward. You guys so, got $87,000 Well, So actually, oddly enough, um, so working on this for, no, oddly enough, actually I can tell you, so $20,000 comes from the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, the Rochester Downtown Partnership uh, decided to basically reverse the gift from the Redevelopment Commission, $20,000 of that at the beginning of the year back to the Redevelopment Commission uh, for the incentive for the Bailey's building. So that money uh, was earmarked per Terry's request to the Rochester Downtown Partnerships Board uh, to be uh, put with the purchase of the Bailey's building. So that's 20,000 of it. Uh, the price that the um, bank had initially given as the purchase price to the team um, was $35,000, but upon them looking at CRA credits and other parts of uh, you know legal uh, possibilities and obviously their reputation in Fulton County and the importance of the project, um, they brought that from 35 to 15, so that's 20. Um, obviously, the project would be eligible for $5,000 for the Rochester Downtown Partnership Facade Grant, uh, so that's 5,000. Um, Duke Energy, um, has uh, committed $1,000 to the Rochester Downtown Partnership to move to the project um, under its community development uh, arm. Uh, NIPSCO has committed $1,500 under its community development fund um, towards the project to be moved through the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Um, obviously, the wall exception um, based on, here's the, this is what we've been working on. Uh, so the wall uh, exception <laughs> saves $30,000. So that leaves a gap of $10,000 um, to fill to provide that support. Um, the team has uh, shared that they prefer not to do a tax abatement. Um, obviously, the whole point of this 
is because they would like to make sure that this project's not the only project um, and that this project will be a project that does some domino um, investment. So the other conversation that um, I've been having with um, trying to figure out how to cover this um, was looking at with Shada and some other folks is, is there potentially a possibility um, for $10,000 to cover that? Um, so obviously that is what this community development piece comes from. Um, the, rest, the rationale behind that, obviously, because we've thought about this a million times, is that we don't want another uh, building like the Centennial Tower where it costs the city about, God knows how much, $130,000. Oh, no, no, so, uh, so then- Private donations. Private donations, yeah. but also lots of heartache and pain. Um, so a $10,000 versus the $100,000 um, potentially is a drop in the bucket. So that is um, that would close that gap. Um, and so it was noted that I should add that and just throw it out there um, and see what thought processes are. So and this is 10,000 above and beyond the 10,000 needed for the uh, theater grant, right? For our sponsoring of the theater grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know where I'm going. <laughs> Shada, what's a uh, normal monthly restaurant water bill? And one off the top of my head, just because I haven't recently looked at it, runs roughly three hundred dollars a month if it's a, if it's operating six to seven days a week. How much sterilization do you guys do on your vats and everything? All the uh, lots. So we're probably looking at four grand influx in water bill per year once they get going. Because they have you know where for how many how many gallons would you use in one sterilization? Well, speaking particularly just the brewing process, I mean, the sterilization and the cleaning, there's a lot of that that goes on, but we're looking at 400 gallons per batch that we brew. I'm, I'm estimating in the first year, you know, we're going to use about 2,500 gallons a month just to brew the beer. That doesn't include the sterilization and the sanitization process that we'll be using every time we brew. Uh, and then that could go up anywhere to potentially 10,000 gallons a month in somewhere around year three. Assuming we hit our numbers and the projections that I put together. Again, that's just the brewing water, that's not the sanitization one. So that's a, a decent, I mean, just don't think about. And obviously, there's requests. I know one of the things that we had concerned ourselves with is how would this be perceived? You know, because you're giving money towards a project for a private donor, the actual difference in this versus just giving it to anybody is that this specific building is a blight on all of us and um, has a unique deterioration that warrants moving forward quickly. Um, <coughs> anybody can see that, but you know, the bank and other folks have noted that another winter may not prove helpful to that. So. Is this something that's outside the realm of uh, FEDCO, Terry? Outside the realm? Yeah, as far as money's uh, available for the business. Is there a financial request? Or just the exception? Uh, the exception, exception and then a financial request that just came about in the last day. You're looking day. for $10,000. Mm -hmm. I think part of the request is going to be in front of the county council. It's going to be for various community development projects especially projects that have um, you know, a large impact, potential large impact like the one these guys are talking about. So yeah, again, we're talking about a matter of $10,000 for a, you know, several hundred thousand dollar you know, investment to save the building that's um, historically prominent. The last really three-story building we have downtown. Um, <coughs> well, <laughs> Uh oh. Don't ruffle it's better, Terry. I know the one next to us is the building is. There are others, but um, yeah. So I mean, community development projects are what we're going to be asking the county to provide seed of dollars for for the county. So some will go to Rochester, some will go to Akron, some will go to Fulton, Riders, and 
talk about the matters, talking about matters. So. And the reason it came Probably here, yeah. Was, you know, granted the exception for and, and basically providing some incentive to, to turn it over. We've been looking at the details, financial details on this project for well over a year, and the numbers aren't getting any smaller in terms of what it's going to cost the investor to, to move the building forward. So I think having a crew that's willing to invest in it, but something like these guys are talking about, well spent. Um, oh, I, I'm 100 percent behind you on that. Just have to figure out where, where where it comes from because you are right. Mm -hmm. It is a you're talking about tax monies. Yes, and, understood. And uh, we have tax monies dedicated for uh, economic development and uh, redevelopment. Uh, anywhere else, it gets a little dicey pulling for a private venture to contribute to a private venture. And this isn't the first group that's been before this council. I can remember years ago when the uh, Compassionate Healthcare uh, Center was uh, getting started, and we went through a similar situation. It's, it's tax monies, and you have to be real careful. Understood. Uh, you don't and the, the county that council has, does have a history with this um, of investment in you know, private uh, ventures uh, to bring about proper use of buildings. Sometimes we just don't want to see buildings fall into the wrong hands. got some track history, some track record with the county council of getting funds uh, for uh, the, the for Delta Tool building, for example. So I remember that one. Uh, yeah. Three buildings in Tijuana that they invested yeah. uh, heavily in uh, that we brought one business to when, actually two businesses to uh, the three buildings and saved three buildings. Uh, so there is some you know, track record of the council funding. And the reason the request was brought here was because uh, Duke had initially given the indication that they were going to supply a larger match, um, and then I received the call at the last hour that that could not move forward. So uh, for the sheer fact that the um, folks are looking to do the counter offer, obviously we had to come and prevent, present this here and see where it would fit most effectively. So that is where we're at. So if it behooves us to <coughs> add it to the uh, county request and it seems that it would be solidified in that, then we can move it there. Uh, just the uh, team needed to be able to have that specific indication that it was solidified before being able to finalize the contract and move forward with the bank. Well, I think it's a great project and well worth coming up with ten thousand dollars someplace but the <clears throat> FEDCO's budgeted we got a budget for that the FEDCO program for business development and getting going and that's I would think that's the direction those funds need to come from that's just opinion <clears throat> uh, I don't know where else you would get them I would offer Lake City, I would counter Lake City Bank at five thousand dollars. And I'd come up with my ten thousand dollars right What else are they gonna do? Yeah. yeah that's I mean we could do that. We have a whole team who's worked really yeah. diligently. But I don't to feel the city has any any I don't really feel that the city of Rochester has any business getting okay. into personal business or real estate. Understood. And I've said made that statement a couple of times in my years. Uh, that I just don't think we do. It's hard to explain to somebody on the street that we gave these people ten thousand dollars to start their business. Why don't you give it to me? I Why completely understand. Me? That was one of the that was one of our concerns, yeah. but obviously it behooves us to ask and to start the conversation and then to see sure. what the other sure. options are and to see. Terry, you were you were gonna say something uh, about Fed Bill. Yeah, yeah, about <laughs> Fed Bill. <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> You better yeah. get sharper before tomorrow. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'm ready. Um, you know, I just, um, yeah, I kind of did actually forget what it was. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there is, again, um, some uh, other communities, other cities and towns are finding ways to incentivize. So, whether it's tax abatement or grants or uh, you name it, I mean, it, it all depends on the project. Kind of broad brush, you go here's you know, ten thousand dollars to kind of throw in a hole when you have a project standing in front of you, uh, on the, especially on the structure um, that we want to keep on the tax rolls. These guys want to keep on the tax rolls. Um, yeah, I 
think you have to you know, use an old phrase, think outside the box and, 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 and provide something to bring that private investment. It's called P3, it's a public-private partnership. Put the public out there a small amount, you put the private out there a large amount to show, hey, this is a city where we want to do business. This is a city where we want to invest our money and our time uh, to do something worthwhile. And I think, for example, Harry Webb just received, what was it, $20,000 from the city of Huntington? Or somewhere that he's moving forward with. He said he received some money from the city to actually move a project forward for economic and development. He got it from their economic development. Yeah, he didn't say which yeah. specific funds, yeah. but that was something that yeah. he noted that he had asked about. I think it's probably Manchester, excuse me, Manchester. Oh. And, and just so the council knows, they're, they're, we do have non tax supported funds that if we needed to get creative, you know, move key to keep this moving. Like you said, Ted, whatever we need to do to make this happen or how we do this happen, we do have non-tax supported funds that we can look at to see if it makes sense um, so that we are not tapping into the taxpayers, uh, those tax supported funds that we have. Because that could be a slippery slope. John, I do exactly. agree because that's been my my sticking point in trying to, that's why I went to Shada because I couldn't in my brain figure out how in the world because if somebody comes to me and asks me about it or would come to you I would I did not want someone to have to field a conversation because I know how many conversations I have to field uh, to be able to speak on behalf of certain decisions I make so I didn't want to put anybody on this council in a position uh, that would make it too awkward but I also wanted to find a creative solution for a problem and we had already asked Terry for we had already had the twenty thousand dollars and then we were looking at the forty thousand dollars for the salary for uh, the Rochester Downtown Partnership, so we were trying to figure out how we can make sure that we're not draining one specific fund for um, requests, but yet move projects forward. So that was just where that was coming from. Do you have a suggestion as to what, are we talking riverboat gambling funds? That would be one of my first ones, would be the first option I would have, because it's an unrestricted fund, mm -hmm. and it's not tax supported. Um, one of the other things that we, we kicked around in the end, as these gentlemen have made clear, they don't want to do, and in my very quick analysis with Amy today when we were chatting, you know, a tax abatement versus the $10,000 versus a $100,000 demolition bill, if that building has to come down at some point because of our affirmation order, uh, you know, how does all of that look? And when you start looking at those ROIs, um, they would prefer to make sure that that investment is paying itself forward and can not going through with a tax abatement. Um, and I will give them 100% kudos for that one, that they are seeing that because just the small investment that they're looking at, I haven't personally seen the business plan, I've just heard the highlights of it. And But we do have a copy like, if you'd like to see it. Yeah, it sounds like the, the process and, and by the time it goes from ground zero to being complete, uh, it, it sounds like it's going to certainly be a very um, thriving opportunity for everyone, them included. So it's, and even if you were to, you know, for them to try to, to make the numbers match and make everything mesh well, you know, you guys are in business, you, you get that, that bottom line, and it would take, you know, three to five years on a tax abatement, even for them to break even, um, unless the assessment came in such dramatically different from where it is now, which I assume it will. It's what, but we Christina, don't know, yeah. those are, that's the unknown. None of us, even the assessor's office couldn't sit here and say, well, if you put this kind of, it would, you know, it's a. It's and a, I called to confirm that with Christina today. She couldn't give me it. Yeah, yeah, and that's a gamble. So this one is more tried and true. Uh, so if we can find a way to assist or go through Fedco or whatever that looks. I hate to say it, we're getting so far, you know, so far ahead of ourselves because first of all we don't even have a contract to buy the property <laughs> mm -hmm. we have we have to just to move things down a little bit mr mayor if i may we've, we've approved option one that is what they came for to basically to that was one of the requests yes bank. sir yep lake city bank has a dead horse laying in the middle of our street hello lake city bank watching on tv yeah. okay go back and counter them <laughs> hey you know we can't pay you 15 we're gonna pay you 10. well Talk and actually to people in warsaw I'll give you some business cards and guys to call and Tell them, hey, yeah. yeah, and this is actually, break. and this is actually on behalf of the team and the investor. So Lake City Bank has brought the purchase price down. They started at the ninety thousand. Yeah, counted the twenty thousand in what you were reducing on the price. So now yes. we throw another ten thousand in, and guess what? We can scratch this line off. 
What was that? <laughs> yeah, and actually that. Uh, <laughs> this is his business. I, yeah, he said I understand. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. I'm, 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 Cheap with money, especially when it's somebody else's. And I completely understand. I don't like to spend yeah, and I completely money. understand. So if the request is no here, obviously we can move forward in a different fashion. It is just coming to see what the thought process from um, the council is. And if the obviously if the answer is no, then obviously they don't want to do a tax abatement, but we'll figure but out. That is an option. Yeah, uh, they. That is an option, but um, it yeah, would be. John has an option. I mean, you, I think you, I think you could, you're right. hitting all of the options, mm -hmm. and that's what we needed. The biggest thing is, is my understanding is, is these folks are looking for support from the council. Whether whatever kind of support that, that is, whether that is yes, we will help figure out a way to keep this project moving forward and commit to that. I think that's kind of where they're at. They want to make sure that they're coming in, putting in this several hundred thousand dollar investment, or you know, they don't want want to come in with with somebody going, no, we really don't want you. They want to come in and say, yes, we we, we want you. Like to support you, however that works, in whatever creative ways you know, council. Oh, I, I don't think anybody up here oh, doesn't have 100% yep. support. 100 yes. support. I think Joe John's saying is uh, a couple of us need to call Lindy Breeden tomorrow at the horse <laughs> and say, <laughs> Lindy, get, get with it. Yeah, there's a couple of us who'd be called up for too. And you are most welcome to do that because I know that they worked very diligently um, to negotiate on behalf. Uh, they actually got the price from 90000 to 15000 <laughs> so I say that that's pretty good. Uh, if somebody has a trump card, they can get it down even farther, then so be it. That would be great. Obviously, that's the easy answer, but um, the bank has uh, basically uh, given the indication that that was uh, as low as they could go. Um, of so, of course. But they said they said $30,000, John, was as low as they could go, or 35000 but we got it lower. So, um, But that's as, as comfortable as they are without having uh, Mayor Denton call them. So... Well. Go to John's office tomorrow and sit next to him and we'll write out a counter proposal. Yeah, so obviously, that you know, basically, um, the process is for them to be able to put the contract because they have negotiated with um, the investor and then they are in the process of putting a counter proposal um, in. Uh, and so to be able to do that, they had to have these two pieces of information to be able to fully uh, build out their business plan. Um, and obviously the building has to be purchased um, by the end of the month. So this is the last board meeting before that. So that was where we needed to figure out what the next option is. So what do we need to do, Shada? I'm just talking about that. I'm done. I'm done. Just wrap her up. You go. I'm done. You I, go I, next. What do we need to do? I think, it, I think it goes without saying we won't let this project fall through the cracks for a lack of $10,000. There will be places we can come up. So, might not be here, but we'll, we'll find you $10,000. So we can. There you go. There's your commitment. So we can. There's a commitment, okay? A commitment. Okay. That's all we need is just a commitment. We don't. <laughs> John, that's your job. You work on that one. That's John's job. Okay. So Thank, thanks, perfect. Amy. Okay. Girl, so, right. but then this affects her. It does affect my budget. Mm -hmm. That she's amending. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how would you like to be to move forward? Because my my Rochester Downtown Partnership Board meeting is on Thursday, well, so I need to. In, in the last one we saw, you had the marquee on here. No, we did not actually have that. <laughs> that was the um. That planters. was. Yeah, that was not us. Planters. Was a different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Planters. Okay. That planters, but the board of board is covering that. So. How would you like me to move forward with this? The amended budget. Well, you're gonna have to wait until next month. Yeah, have to wait for the ten thousand dollar aspect. I put a question mark there for your Okay. So we will add determined. Yeah, and we'll just add we'll talk about the forty thousand and the rest of it we'll just I was gonna say for our purposes for RDB, we'll we'll make our budget the way it is. We can still pending budget. Yeah, pending. So, Final so decisions. No, no Perfect. Do you need anything from us? Anything else? I'd like to see that business plan. Would you email it to me? Uh, Mike has copies of it. Okay. He brought them for y'all if you would like to see that. No, I'm for everybody. I apologize. I was having equipment issues right before I came, but I have five copies. Mm -hmm. I would gladly get another four copies of these. Okay. Right. Good luck, all. Thanks. Thank you. Hope you get it all first and get yeah, a contract. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to go back to the video. Um, do I? I don't know if you're going to go back to the video.
Okay. I've made Mr. Mr. Ellis feel back there for that's a while. Why don't you step up and do the redevelopment commission? No, that's fine. It's a good comment. We're going to jump ahead to Terry. He's got to get out of here. Okay. Thank you. Wow. You can send that one down. Oh my gosh, there's 10 grand worth of hours, paper. Hours and hours. <laughs> Don't tell me and that. it's not finalized yet. <laughs> there's more hours to be done, so. Uh, Terry, uh, Terry Lee with the Redevelopment Commission. Yeah, really from more the Fedco side to begin with, I see you guys have the uh, resolution for the Slum and Blight Declaration for the Times Theater down at the bottom of the page. Um, I didn't know if you guys had any questions about that. We discussed it at the uh, June meeting, I believe, um, that for the Ochre grant, we have to repeal the previous Slum and Blight and bring this one on just the, the theater building. Um, also, a couple updates on that. We expect the FedCo, we have ownership of the theater building right now. We expect that the FedCo executive meeting on Thursday will vote to uh, sign the deed um, over to the 501c3 Rochester Times Theater um, not-for-profit organization. So they'll be carrying the ball 100% from there forward. And also on August 2nd, which I think is next Wednesday maybe, um, the Okra community liaison will be here to look at the project, sit down and talk with Emily Gottschalk from the theater board and Stephen Ray from the regional plan council and um, tour the facility. I think there will be a tour of the facility and discussion of the entire business plan and the entire um, grant request and so forth in terms of some of the further details. So I wanted to kind of touch on the theater project. Um, also, um, Amy just got all the money from you guys, so maybe I'm a dollar day late and a dollar short here. <laughs> But I think it would be um, good for the city to support the grant application, uh, the 10%, whether it's in kind or other, 10% uh, of 500,000 is 50. Now this is not gonna be a privately owned uh, uh, outfit or operation. It is a not-for-profit organization and run as such. Um, so 10% of the 500,000 is a minimum uh, grant match. I know the theater board is looking to bring in quite a bit more than that, so it may not be necessary, and I may have a further report after Thursday that there are other funds available. Um, I think the city had discussed 10000 I don't know if that was um, cash or if that was sort of sustainability. Uh, maybe you can provide some um, clarity for, on that for me, or at least by the time we uh, meet with the community liaison, I'll need to have that um, kind of answered. Um, so theater. Um, other than that, I, mean, I can update you here all night on Fedco business, um, whether it's Blacker or um, Dean Foods or the Wind Project or the Butanol plant or, you know, part of our seated request for Highway 31 improvements uh, for industrial development out there. A lot of things going on. Um, Would you like to share briefly our NDOT uh, trip uh, last week? Yeah, good trip to uh, Indianapolis last Thursday. Um, to meet with one of the project managers and one of the economic development directors with NDOT. Uh, basically a discussion of, hey, we're, we want to, you know, we've got some interest in Highway 31 development. Uh, for the 17 years or 18 years I've lived in Rochester, there's been discussions about limited access and elimination of, uh, you know, access to 231, which makes it really difficult for, you know, development decisions to be made. Um, uh, in their uh, five-year plan that came out last week, um, yeah, last week I think, or maybe the week before, uh, there are no changes in alignment uh, of 31 uh, in uh, Fulton County, no changes in access points. Um, it is uh, redlined through Fulton County to, uh, for the next 20-year plan, to uh, receive additional <coughs> uh, funds for safety improvements and access improvements and those kind of things, but no, uh, no true plan right now to, to come Nothing through and, drastic. and leave us yeah. two, two interchanges and a couple mm -hmm. overpasses. So we're going forward as, you know, our operation is that we're, we're gonna develop 31s as, as it sits right now. And then it really, I, I think they were very glad to have us a, ahead of the game. I mean, we'll, uh, Mayor and I are going to Illinois tomorrow to meet with a couple of companies. Um, and I think we can walk in and say, you can plan to be at this location without fear of being, you know, cut off from from instant access to Highway 31. So, really good meeting there at NDOT. And we followed up today with some questions, and they got right back with us. So, good. And uh, that 
but they are pretty definite. There's going to be two J turns, ten and one ten. That's in the cards. But yeah. Yeah, ten and one ten have uh, been yeah. on the radar. But, but the good news is the rest is. I got the impression that uh, money's a little hard to come by to do everything and everything. So I think we're going to be all right. Anything else, Terry? Just on the wind project, uh, we met with uh, Res, uh, the large commercial wind developer that's looking at Miami, Cass, and Fulton counties. Uh, met with Casey uh, Coles with Plan Commission and also Steve Metzger, County Commissioner, last week. And um, Brad had a half a dozen things with the uh, zoning ordinance um, that uh, they would like to see looked at um, with some possible changes and amendments to the ordinances. Um, that would be at the um, Council, excuse me, at the Plan Commission's uh, meeting on August 28th at 7 p.m., uh, the main one being that the uh, wording of the uh, existing ordinance was vague on what was required in terms of public hearing, uh, which they were interpreting worst case scenario if they put up 100 wind turbines in Fulton County that each one would require a separate public hearing, which would really cause them a lot of angina um, uh, to, to do that. So they were asking for one public hearing for the project because it's one project. It may be 50 or 80 or 100 turbines, but it's one project, so they're asking for one public hearing. There are a couple of other things about uh, decibel levels, which they actually agreed to increase it um, from what the council, or from what the uh, zoning ordinance currently says, um, but there was also some indications that, um, you know, they were, they were looking for a little bit of give on how close the property lines they could be if both property owners had windmills on their property and things like that. So, uh, Casey, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what the... Uh, um, board says on August 28th, but it didn't seem like a lot of um, anything large, but the wind company needed some clarification on half a dozen items. Large wind project, if it comes out, it could mean a significant amount of money to the county, townships, and uh, also to the city. So. Okay. So that's all I got, really. Anything else, Terry? Thanks, Terry. Okay, thank you. Mr. Elling. <clears throat> yeah. This is uh, Paul Elling with Donahue and Associates. I asked Paul to, uh, sorry for the long wait for uh, sure. Paul to come up from Indianapolis. Uh, they're doing the uh, storm sewer project for uh, Main Street, 9th Street, and Monroe. Taking a look at it, and the only way to eat this elephant is a piece at a time. It's about a $16 million total project, and we're not going at it quite that fashion. We're taking one piece at a time. So, Paul, would you like to explain what Donahue has done and the construction process that we're going to be entering in, the Gantt chart situation and such? Okay. Um, basically, we were retained uh, this past February to work on the project. Uh, at this point, we have completed uh, soil borings along the alignments for Main and Monroe Street. Uh, the survey has recently been completed also, and I, I tried to download part of it the other day. It was unsuccessful, so uh, I'm talking to the surveyor, and I expect to get that uh, uh, probably in the office tomorrow. Then, So once that's complete, uh, part of the project was to refine the modeling that we did for the master plan work that we did last year and by refinement uh, we're looking at uh, what we refer to as 2D modeling which uh, basically will identify not only what the capacity of the storm sewer needs to be but also what happens to that excess water uh, when there's a higher intensity storm event. Typically we're only going to design for a 10 year rainfall or a 25 year rainfall and then when you have the 50 or 100 year event, that excess water goes somewhere. And so we're gonna be modeling uh, in the corridor where that excess water is gonna go uh, so that we can make sure that it doesn't go into somebody's business. Following the completion of the modeling, which is only gonna take probably uh, six weeks or so, 
Uh, at that point, I'm prepared to start uh, the design work on the project. The schedule at this point calls for design to be uh, completed next March and then uh, ready to go to bidding at that point. Uh, we've been in discussions with uh, Shada and the mayor about maybe delaying that somewhat until the uh, funding is in place for actual construction. The construction of this initial phase is currently estimated at about two and a half million dollars. Uh, so there's no point in us finishing the design soon if the funding isn't in place for it yet. So that's some of the discussions that you guys have been having regarding the stormwater utility mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, proceeding with that. So that's kind of in a nutshell where the project is at right now. Um, and I guess I'm open to any questions and I understood that there was some concern that we might be duplicating some information that uh, was previously obtained, but uh, I can assure you I'd be happy to get whatever previous information I can use. I've been pestering the mayor and Shada to dig through the archives to find stuff for me, uh, but uh, at this point haven't found anything that I can use for design. There's been some uh, preliminary conceptual type of things that were done. Uh, but not to the degree of accuracy necessary for me to be able to do a design on it. Uh, obviously in a sewer project, you know, six inches is important whether you go up or down and uh, not knowing what datum some of the previous work was done on and there's a number of different datums you can use that they all tend to vary about four to six inches. So uh, we uh, wanted to use a datum we were confident in uh, and we've got that information now and we be proceeding then uh, uh, as soon as the modeling is completed with the uh, design work. Yeah, and I asked Paul to come up today because this Paul uh, asked me last meeting uh, the difference between the 2012 study by Triad and what Donahue is doing. I was caught a bit off balance. The, uh, the initial study in 2012 was in, in preparation of establishing a rate system for the utilities. The, uh, the storm sewer rate system and uh, it was we went through that and that was pretty much a desk audit right uh, uh, seven thousand dollar venture to establish what what the rates would be to charge everybody throughout the community uh, we're still we're still working that uh, it was kind of a is it safe to say general it was general, it was simplistic. I won't say it was uh, Coming up around unique. five bucks. Yeah, I yeah. won't say it was unique uh, because a lot of communities that don't have a lot of good uh, GIS type data, they'll use an approach like that because you can easily incorporate it and get it running. Uh, it does have some limitations in that uh, uh, you know, there might be some businesses or some residential parcels that are way off on one end or another that uh, either are getting a free ride or getting hosed to some degree. So, I mean, the more accurate you can get your data and the more uh, fine tuning you can do, uh, it's you get results with a better rate. However, getting that fine tuning data costs money. So, uh, it's kind of a balancing act as to how you want to approach it. At yeah. this point, our contract does not include any efforts at all developing the rate study. Uh, we've talked about some of that information, but we're not involved in that part of it at all at this point. And we have some accounting folks that we're working with on that to try and get that. You can't have a fixed number for everybody. You've got to massage that, uh, you know, schools and hospitals and the bigger areas, they're going to pay more. In a, you know, in a rate than than a resident would pay, and we're going through that. So. It's based on impermeable, so permeable and impermeable right. services. And, and typically, uh, in most communities, when you end up with this kind of a, a rate situation where you have commercial and residential, the residences typically pay somewhere between a third, maybe a half, at, at the outside of the total. Uh, uh, revenues and commercial and industrial churches and schools they pay the rest yeah and then it, it, it should also be noted that uh, before you take on a project of this nature if you're
you're going to bond it, which it would have to be bonded. Uh, and my colleagues at the uh, county heard this the other night on regards to building a new jail. To float a bond, you have to have created a revenue stream before you can do that. So before the first shovel full of dirt is turned, you have to convince the bond market you have a way to make payments. So a uh, rate system for the utility has to be established and then that started, uh, we're looking at the first of next year, uh, starting that process. Because it will be part of the tax, going the property tax situation. As it was set up in the, uh, the ordinance, the utility ordinance. Uh, and that was another question, uh, is our you, storm sewer utility ordinance still uh, in effect? Because it was, uh, oh my gosh, Shada, you got it there in front of you. When was it adopted? It was adopted, I believe it was November of 2001, was when the stormwater utility was actually established. Uh, it was amended in 2008, and the amendment was, I don't know if John would remember this, the amendment was to assign instead of having a separate stormwater utility board that the stormwater would fall under the umbrella of the board of works. The board of works. Board of board yeah. of works and safety. So, uh, would you like to uh, apologize? The attorney was not uh, able to be here tonight. He had, was called out of town, but he did research it and sent us uh, a statement. Uh, for Attorney Perkins, I looked through both the 2001 ordinance and the 2008 amendment. Neither has a sunset provision. I agree that the rates must involve a public hearing, but I don't see any reason to recreate the stormwater utility. And yeah. his response was, uh, to, to me, was is, uh, I had prefaced that by saying, you know, and I firmly believe we, we have to go through the public hearing process to establish the rates. Uh, so that was his response back that um, I was correct in that thing because we haven't gone down that road. We established the utility, never established a rate. So uh, we had started conversations in 2014, John, with the Board of Works. Because uh, it was a few years ago. At least three or four years ago. Yeah, well, we kind of started that conversation because essentially what it is is the Board of Works would need to make. The recommendation of here's what we would like to set as the rate schedule to the council then the council would approve would go through the public hearing process uh you know hear from the public and then move forward with establishing those rates for revenue to come in and just as the mayor said all the conversations i've had with the financial advisors you know we have to have some kind of revenue stream and we have to have at least you know six to six months to a year typically a year that 12 months worth of revenue data and uh, showing that that's coming in before we can even go to the bond market you know, the, and the bond market is is becoming more stringent so therefore we have to make sure that we are accomplishing those goals and, and get that taken care of before we go to bond on this project and you know we're all very well aware of those problem areas and uh, I, I think there's been some of those aha now I see why you have a problem from the Donahue group yeah. <laughs> when they've been doing the modeling and all of that. Uh, anything else? No. Uh, do you present? Do you have any Yeah. You can open it up to me. Because sure. I'm the one that initiated this. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Elling, you say we, you did or did not have access to the Dryden Missile. So. Uh, uh, the mayor provided me a copy of the report. I reviewed the report. Uh, it contains three parts. Uh, the first one was a a desktop analysis of what the uh, uh, what a rate study could be. What they did is they sampled uh, or they selected 50 residential parcels uh, around the community and tallied up the uh, impervious areas for those, came up with an average. Did the same for I think it was 26 or 27 uh, commercial or industrial properties and came up with a estimated average for those parcels and then used those numbers uh, along with a number of parcels of each kind in uh, the city to come up with a, a estimated revenue stream that could be generated at various uh, rates assigned per equivalent residential unit. Uh, the report itself is only 11 pages long. Uh, there's probably about uh, 
10 pages of data that go along with it. Uh, and that was the, the first part of the board. The second part was a copy of a stormwater rate ordinance. Uh, I'm not aware that was ever adopted. And then the third part of it was a rather extensive uh, listing or, or, or uh, development code for stormwater that uh, could be uh, incorporated. Once again, I'm not aware if that's been adopted or not, but uh, from what I could see from my review of it, it looked like a fairly extensive uh, stormwater code. But it's for new development, the codes and requirements that they would have to comply with. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, uh, the program for the, uh, construction that the city would pertain to. Nowhere in their study did they do surveying, soil samples, none of that? None of that is mentioned in the report. You got the, did, you, did he have the full report? Yep. Yeah. It was, it was basically what they call a desk audit uh, to, like I say, to establish rates. Yeah. There was no documentation of any field work that was done at all. The Donahue group, we, we've identified the, the the problem areas in town and picked out one of the most problem sections to attack first. And this project will continue long after this mayor's gone. There's yeah. five different sections that need, need work. At a, and like I said, it's about a $16 million total project, and we, we can't handle a $16 million, million tearing up of the town, so we're going to take it as a section yeah. at a time. I would so, have been happy to review uh, previous soil borings or survey and use that data if I could. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, you said Triad was primarily looking at the financial end, right. the charges and this and that and the other? Correct. The, the, the rates. The rates. To establish the storm sewer rates. All right, and this accounting firm now is doing what? We've got an accounting firm that's helping us do the size, massage the material, and we're working with Paul on the. They're the, not working on the rates at all. We, we've got the rate information, but we're massaging it a little bit. It turned out it, it, we don't think it's, it's, it's good to have a hard blodge rate across the board. Uh, there will be some areas like I said to industry and, and hospital and school who will have higher rates than the than the residents and we want to drill down on that so we are massaging all that information okay. we have an accounting firm working with us that uh, has had experience in doing that so you know if you get a five dollar rate it doesn't mean the hospital is going to have a five dollar rate my question yeah. to you before is again try as information is useful no, we I wouldn't say. For a study that we didn't need. No, 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 no. We didn't. We paid seven thousand uh, dollars. To try and, it? Yeah. I don't think so, Mary. You better look back. Uh, I can confirm that it was seventy-two hundred dollars that we paid. For what? For try it. Completely. Yes. For okay, all. I'll get back to your archives. Like, I think you're wrong in that. I'll get back to you. Okay. Well. Uh, My question was, it was useless or not? No, we're, we're, we're using it for the rate study. We're looking at it for the rate study. And then you're massaging what you... Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not going to take it and throw it out there because we think there's some attention has to be done to it at this stage of the game. You know, there's a lot, a lot of parking lots out there and things that are paved now that weren't, weren't back at that time. So the rates, we're going to take a good hard look at them. Uh, you and I have been going back and forth on emails. And three times I've asked you to see these reports, and you haven't responded. I have responded. I you no, you said you want to have a meeting. Well, sir, if you want the public records, come in and request them. You can get the public I'm records. I'm sorry, say that. Again. I say if you want to come in and, and ask for copies of the public records, you can. The contracts. Yes, you can get the contracts. That's that's what I said to you three times. I, I I'm looking forward to a meeting with you. But I asked you to have access to those, and you uh, didn't respond. No, you, you asked to, who who could sit down and go through. No, I said, who is my contact to get this information? And I think the third time you said it was you. Yeah, I said I'd be happy to sit down with you. In the building or whatever, and then you and I will be. 
Yeah, I, I read I read your email very carefully. You were not asking for copies of the reports. I didn't ask for copies. I asked to review it. Okay. Which means I could come in here and review it. You would come in and you'd sit down with me or one of the other. <coughs> sit down by myself. I don't need you until I'm done reading. Well, we don't we don't turn over our records to people. They're public Just, records. They're public records. You can you can have copies of oh, them. But, uh, then fine, I'll come in and get a copy. Okay. My other request was, uh, did you come up from Indy? Yes. And my other request was, well, you don't recall. You wanted to, uh, what, have a meeting with uh, both of the contractors? Try no, it? I wanted both here so we could talk about uh, apples and oranges. Well, sir, what's your objective, may I ask? Objective, What's your objective here? My objective is to get answers, Mayor. Are, are you having a problem with that? No, no. I, I requested you. You took it on your own to bring him up here, right? Yes. Yes. And I requested, not knowing that he was well. Yes, I did know that. That you have triad here, but no response. Well, if you come in, you can get the records. You can see everything we've got. We have, we're, we're not hiding anything I didn't from say you. Were. I've asked you three times to see these. But I will come to City Hall now. You come to City Hall and That's you can get the records. Is there, <laughs> do we, we don't charge for the copies, right? Yes, we do. Uh, if, he wants, if he wants to come, to, he is more than welcome to come to City Hall and I will provide the documentation. He can sit in the conference room and review it without taking it off site. Um, as far as copies, it is 10 cents per page for every copy. So that particular study, you know, he'd be looking some, some change to actually take copies, but if he just wants to come in and sit down and review it, that's perfectly fine. So this would be, Chada would be my contact, right? Chada could be your contact, but I'm not comfortable with anybody coming in off the street without without monitoring of the records. What if the records disappear? Are you going to going to have copies of them? Yes. We okay. Have, yeah. I okay. mean, it's, it's one of those... Uh, and that's nothing against you. I wouldn't allow anyone to do that. Yeah. We didn't do that in industry. Right. When somebody comes yeah. in for, for these studies, we have multiple copies of them. But okay. he's welcome to come in, you know, in the, okay. the conference room. Why don't you, why don't you do that then? And What's that? Come on in and Shada will make the records available to you. That's fine. Okay. Okay. It's a long way around. <laughs> I, just, you know, I thought you wanted to sit down with me. I do, <laughs> but I wanted to look at the reports first. Okay. I thought I explained it in my emails that we would we we spoken. You know what? You know what, Paul? Yeah. I hate emails because they. Uh, you, you, the context. Is yeah. Uh, if you would please call City Hall to schedule an appointment with me because I'm going to be in and out, and then we'll set up the time so I make sure I have all the records that you want that you're requesting. But 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 she can have the invoices for you too. That's that's public record also. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And Paul, thank you for okay your presentation. You have any questions? Give me a holler. Okay. Thank you. you know where I am. I do. <laughs> I do. Okay. Is it over? <laughs> you stay if you want to. Stay if you want to. We're going to go drink a beer. I don't blame you. I'm going to go. Okay, uh, Chief Butler, are you still away? Was there a question back there? Yeah, I got a question in the back. If you stand up, we can't hear you, partner. That's the last on our agenda. We have a second and third reading tonight. I couldn't even, oh, I couldn't even hear it. Bicycle <laughs> ordinance. <laughs> okay, Chief Butler, you're up. Yeah. He's later on the agenda. All right. Uh, I'll try to follow the three general rules given to me by my commander as uh, the military. Be quick, be brief, and be gone. With that being said, nice report. You. Bye. <laughs> you have the report in front of you. No, for the record, uh, for June, auto fire alarms four in the city, control burn, burn piles, one in Richland Township, one in Newcastle Township, dumpster fires, one in the city, mutual aids, one to Liberty, two to Henry, one to Union Township. 
accidents, uh, one in the city, and that was a hazmat incident. Uh, three in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle, one in Richland Township. Medical assist, 25 in the city, nine in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. We drove the ambulance four times. Had one rescue in the city. That was a infant stuck or a child stuck in a swing at the park, I believe. Uh, we did the triathlon Jeez, support. I didn't hear about that. that wasn't yeah, it, it was pretty much released by the time the truck pulled up, so it wasn't. It was a really a non-issue, but it went down as a rescue at the park. And then uh, the triathlon support, and then canceled calls, two in the city, one in Union Township, uh, for a total of uh, 58 runs and one drill for the month of June. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Cheap shots. <laughs> what happened to the room? You're ordering, you're ordering. I'll try to be quicker. <laughs> and go. We got my report. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. There you go. For the month of June, you've got my numbers. You've got the crimes. Uh, pretty standard. Our calls for service were 810 for the month. 44 lockouts, 18 people incarcerated. Um, and then you have the the crimes that those people were allowed for. Forgery. That's a new one. Yeah. Moving up into the big time, man. Um, hey, we're getting into white collar, right? <laughs> um, and then you also have um, a copy of what we put together on our latest spillment proposal. Um, I'm not going to go in, over that in depth, but feel free to look over it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We just basically broke it down. Um, what agency should pay by usage, in my opinion? I, I'm not saying everyone will agree with it, but that's just in my opinion. We broke it down on, on based on usage, and each department or agency pays for what they use. Yeah, we, we basically are paying for exactly what we're using, and also the maintenance fee is based on exactly what we're using, not a straight third of the whole project. It, and, that seems and, very fair. And this is in the hands of the council, yes. county council? Yes. What is the added module? We added a couple of um, items in mobile. I think it was mobile field and interview forms and mobile arrest forms. The uh, issue of the, we left uh, out mobile touch. The issue of the guaranteed four percent increase. We did take exception to that in the letter, stating that uh, not saying we wouldn't pay some kind of increase uh, but we would expect to have the provider come and explain the added value for that before agreeing to that yeah, they, uh, yeah. exactly you know I don't we, there aren't uh, many of us who just sign up for guaranteed price increases over 10 years um, quickly other news um, our two new officers that we've given conditional offers to they've been down to Indianapolis to public safety medical they passed their their physical uh, evaluation and psychological evaluation we're just waiting to get paperwork back from public safety medical then we have to sign it send it down to perf wait for enrollment i'm hoping to get them on the road first day training august 14th it's a little ambitious right now i think because i think they're kind of public safety medical is dragging their feet on getting us the paperwork i don't know if they were are running behind but i've got the results but i can't do anything until i get the hard copy from them um and then police in the park this Saturday. Uh, if you guys aren't doing anything, we'd be happy to see you out there. Um, I hope we have a huge crowd. I hope we run out of food. I hope we run out of snacks. I, I hope it's um, our best event yet. Um, I've confirmed we are going to have a dunk tank, uh, two face painters, and a balloon artist. We'll have a dog demonstration, a canine demonstration at 8 o'clock. Uh, everything starts at 7. We'll, um, we'll have a dog demonstration at 8 o'clock, and then the movie starts at 9. And, so, and what time are you in the dunk tank, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> I delegated that one. <laughs> seven o'clock starts at seven o'clock. <laughs> so, and the the, uh, the uh, animals, animal adoption center will be there also with an adoption event. Yeah, I, I, I again, I, Paul Barrett with Chief Shots is saying, uh, I'd encourage you to come out if you've got a chance. It was, uh, it was really well attended last year, and I. Uh, it's kind of nice to see that kind of participation in our park. The chief does a great job with it. It's a lot of work. It is, yeah. Um, I appreciate that. I just, I, I hope to continue to grow it every year. So, you know, 
know, next year, if you have any suggestions or ideas, by all means, uh, throw them my way and we'll get it figured out. Can you say what movie it is? Uh, yeah, this year it's uh, Secret Life of Pets. Okay. So and For our worldwide audience. Right? That's right, yes. All, all across the world, come to Rochester, watch a movie about pets, and then take one home. Yeah. It was really encouraging last year to see uh, five police officers uh, playing pickup basketball with five kids. They regretted that afterwards. They were oh, sweaty man. in uniform. <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. out very well in uniform. <laughs> it, it was a good time, though. So, yeah, unless you have any questions, that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Thank Thanks, you. Andy. Okay, Randy? I'm going to start the clock on you. There we go, Randy. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, we did normal lab testing. We did the plant. We mowed it. We had number second stage number two clarifier. We got it put back together. It's back online and running. The collections we did locates, mowed lift stations. We jetted storm drains on Boulevard Street, and we had a sewer call on in the alley between Jackson Boulevard and Lakeshore Drive, and we jetted it and restored the flow. Storm water. Paul from Donahue has explained that. 7th Street, uh, we started the project July 10th. We lost two days last week because of rain. They finished the bore pit uh, this week, and tomorrow they're supposed to start boring under the railroad to insert the steel casing. 4th Street, the uh, Community Crossing grant application was submitted July 12th. And this part of the 4th Street projects from the railroad to State Road 25 at a total cost of $1,327,099. And because the city population is under 10,000, NDOT will pay for 75%, which is $995,324, and the city will pay 25%, which is the 331775 Which we're capturing from? That is from our special lower distribution uh, that we got last year from the state that is sitting in a fund. The only thing we can use it for is improvement projects such as this. Yes. And we'll have a little leftover in that fund because we actually have about 375000 and 125000 of the, we captured 505000 total. I was required to put 75% of that into a special distribution fund, which I did, which is was the one that I mentioned to you guys. The, or actually we had to have approval. You guys created that fund for me. And then the other remaining 25% went rainy day fund. The, the only other thing, the bids for the phosphorus removal and super nate at the plant was open July 20th and Commonwealth took them to review. Right. Any questions for Randy? Got a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah. I have a question. The 7th Street project, is that tied into the, the wastewater or the sewer project that he was talking with? Uh, no. This is, um, we're putting a new sewer line under the railroad because of the old one is uh, was a cast iron pipe, and it was scaled so bad that okay. we couldn't get the camera truck through it. Oh, and it pretty much services <laughs> the east side of Rochester around the lake. Yeah, it's a huge artery. So, uh, so it's sewer, not stormwater. Right, right. that's okay. sewer. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting operation. They have to uh, do some pumping uh, and uh, changing of direction of the thing while they put the new one in. So it's going to be quite interesting. But they know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Lenny. This better be good. Huh? Huh? This better be good. It waited two hours for you. <laughs> I'm seeing some no-dos back here. <laughs> Out of the street department, we uh, ran the recycling route as we always do. Um, ran the downtown re trash receptacles. Watered the flowers downtown Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, pending the rain, and that's been pretty frequent here lately. Uh, Weed eaten and pulled weeds at City Hall and the Community Resource Center and sprayed and trimmed the bushes. Um, we've been cleaning off the storm drains and trying to keep them clean. 
Um, repaired a few street signs on Mitchell and Ewing and Ida Wild and West Side Drive. <coughs> Trimmed back around uh, a couple of stop signs. Um, cleaned the started cleaning the vacant lot lot over there at uh, Sixth and Monroe. Um, chip brush and picked up some small piles of brush. Um, picked up some bags of yard debris. Hauled two loads of mulch for the butterfly garden. Mowed the shooting range, patched holes in various locations, and been sweeping the streets. Is that mulch project all finished now at the park? Yeah, we are we are done with the uh, <coughs> we uh, uh, replenished the mulch in Manitou Mountain. Um, we still have quite a bit left, but uh, Fansler Park is going to take a, a large majority of it. And I figured if we have any left, we can just uh, kind of fill it in. And as they tromp it down, we can uh, add to Manitou Mountain as they usually do once it's fluffed up. And then uh, another park uh, news: we uh, I got the signage for the uh, disc golf course. It's just uh, getting a matter of time for Denny to sit down and uh, paint paint it up, and um, it won't take long to put the signs up. And uh, I see they've been frequently using that quite a bit out there. It's surprising. And I've heard a lot of good things about it. But uh, good, good. Um, other than that, that's about all I have. Is there any way we can get that mulch uh, out of there before the... Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 we're going to do that tomorrow. Okay. We're going to work on the Fainsler Park tomorrow. Okay. Very good. I was going to uh, get with um, Derek's people this morning and have them do it, but... Uh, one of them did show up. Show up. He was sick, so I didn't want to just put it all on the one guy. So, uh, well, I told him, made arrangements to do it in the morning then. Okay. okay. And uh, I, I'd like to thank uh, thank uh, Derek for uh, letting him letting us use them for a couple of days. They uh, really was a good asset, and uh, they did they do a marvelous job. Um, Derek I, owned his summer helpers to Lenny for I, uh, had, a mountain of mulch. To deal with. I had uh, six of my guys out there of the street department, and Wade and Denny were, were also out there. Uh, we had uh, Manitou Mountain filled in by noon Good. with Great. mulch. So, Super. Uh, they they all busted their butts. I can't. I, I take my hat off to them. They uh, did a good job. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Lenny? Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. Area Planning Commission, Karen. I was unable to attend the meeting before last. And we didn't, we're not having one tomorrow night, so it'll be a while. Okay. All right. Short report. That's a quick one. That's good. good report. That's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My time is good. Uh, oh, there. Park Board, Mason. Yeah. Um, well, Lenny did his part. Chief Shots talked about movie night in the park, so I can skip over all that. <laughs> um, pool numbers. From June 12th to July 8th, the pool's revenue, just from that time period, uh, were $9,333, um, and that comes from 3,796 swimmers. That's amazing. It Isn't is. That something? And, wow. And, you know, that's an almost month period. In the first two weeks, the first two and a half weeks, I think, it isn't included now. There's another 30 some hundred swimmers and revenues of 16,000 at that point, but a lot of um, season passes were bought in the first couple weeks. Um, they replaced a diving board that was broken. <coughs> and, and we had a meeting out there. Yep, the meeting was actually at the pool. Um, luckily, they had that nice office because it was pouring rain the whole time. So we got to stay dry. Uh, that's it from the pool. From the golf course, um, our year-to-date numbers are $166,713. Um, that's the highest since 2013, um, just slightly under 2013, and 15,000 short of 2012. But um, a steady, steady increase the past few years. And let's see, what's the day today? 25th. There's a camp weekend outing Friday, and Nick Patterson Memorial August 12th. So camp weekend is 
um, Friday the 28th and Nick Patterson on Saturday August 12th and that is it for the golf course so that is it for our, my report okay. any questions <coughs> questions for Mason I did I did forget something in there uh, okay the uh, Manitoba Mountain Golf is power washed and it, we probably can put some CR on next week okay start on that too so. great great thanks Lenny okay uh, BZN Council on Aging uh, Marty BZA meets tomorrow, a rather small agenda for them, um, a home addition, a fence, and a, a guy that wants, he has a lot, wants to split it into two, and one of them would be a little bit small, but um, nothing of great consequence there, but that's tomorrow night. Uh, Council on Aging met yesterday. From the transpo people, uh, we've discussed a little bit about the rates uh, that the drivers are paid uh, versus the rate for the dispatch, but nothing was done with those. The bottom line for uh, the rides, we are up eight and a half to nine trips a day. So the report for June of 2017 was 3,626 trips, which was up about 110 from the prior time. Yeah. That sounds I mean, like my trips to Inyards when I'm working on a project. <laughs> they, <laughs> That's uh, a lot of trips. We did ask for a little information, and basically the uh, expense for Transpo is, is about 70 cents a mile. For every every mile that they drive so uh, the rate increase on the rides May June and July has generated about uh, $659 of increased revenue and uh, they are using about 1313 driver hours per month so that's the report from Transpo. RSVP, the uh, Cape Cod trip is completely full, so there's no room for anybody else. That's a really good thing for RSVP. We don't make a lot of money on those things, but they, they are uh, pretty well received. There is a trip to San Antonio in May of 2018 that is already sold out uh, I'm sorry halfway sold out uh, so if anybody's interested in that $899 gets you transportation to San Antonio it does bring you back John even <laughs> yeah 10 nights nine uh, 10 days nine nights so um, they are still taking reservations for that they also had volunteers that worked at the fair and are working at the recycling center this month. As far as Council on Aging, the uh, golf tourney had a result of $6,800 of revenue for the council, which it was up from last year, which is really nice. There is a cookout that is at 1130 on August 24th and council director georgia matty wanted to make sure that council and city employees knew they were invited to that so um it's at the center yes it is hot dogs and chips and things like that when was that again that is august 24th at 11 30. And uh, there is a garage cleanup that is being uh, organized now. And I understand that uh, Georgia maybe has talked to Lenny, going to uh, loan us a power washer for a day or two or something like that. So uh, pending questions, that's my report. Any questions? Marty? 
Thank you, Marty. Uh, tree board and EMS, Brian? Tree board got earlier in the month. Uh, still going to do the ongoing uh, trimming and removal of trees as the city residents call in or they, if they're seen, you know, the trees are seen or whatever they need to be done, comes tree board attention. Yeah, still working on all that. Uh, so something came in today to Lenny. Uh, it, it obviously, the tree board hasn't met on it yet, officially. Mm. Uh, they don't have to. Well, so, but there's you know, still working with Lenny as yes. emergency matter emergency come Emergency situation. Yeah. Right. I saw that come in. Uh, how emergency are we there? Yeah. There's uh, Thomas and Brad were out shipping this morning and uh, they called me over. Uh, 1117 Madison address, and uh, there was like four or five tree uh, limbs broke just in the fork of the trees up uh, on this uh, tree that we looked at, and uh, there was one already broke off, probably 30 foot long, hanging on the ground. So, uh, and there, the tree is all decayed and rotted. And, so it's in really, really yeah, tough shape. Let's let's just go I, ahead. Yeah, it's going down in the morning. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Well, and the other thing is, is, it is one that's already on their list. Okay. We did okay. Ray did confirm that 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 particular tree, I believe, is on their list for the next round. But given the circumstances for it, safety or, matters. <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't feel it. Like, but it is not. It was not one that had already gone out for list to be. No, it's okay. on the next one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. EMS, did you say? Uh, EMS act well the next day. The EMS did meet okay. last Friday, last Thursday, I think it was Thursday, Friday, I think it was. And uh, the, everything seems to be going well with the, you know, the switch over is going well and the you know the, the staffing is doing good. Uh, they still have some issues with the sometimes with the various volunteer agencies and everybody else. They have to get memorandums or understanding between everybody. There's, Dispatch issues not related to the spillment matter, but dispatching is who goes where. Uh, the biggest safety thing they brought up was one person calls one helicopter, another agency calls another helicopter. Two helicopters don't always know that they're in the air together, and it's a safety issue for them. So that's one of the bigger things they're trying to address that now with the surrounding counties. Is that more or less sum it up, Tom? Was it more or less sum it up, but the Two helicopters yeah, basically being what we're going to do is uh, EMS has gotten with, with the other counties, like, well, take 110, for instance, there's the, there's the, the magic line there. If, if the victim is uh, on the north side, it's Marshall County. If it's on the south side, it's, it's ours. What I normally do is I'll, I'll walk around, I'll talk to the medics, I'll, I'll request, or, or I'll radio their request that, that an air ambulance be, be brought in place. If Argus arrives quickly and just with the mechanism of the injury and, and normally the speeds are involved there, they might call their dispatch um, for a helicopter. And that's how we get two inbound aircraft. So what we're gonna do is just try to double check with, with both chiefs or both ICs to see what, what's been requested so we're not duplicating requests. Um, it, it was just uh, both agencies doing the right thing. Sometimes the, the law enforcement will arrive there first and, and, and there's enough veteran officers um, that, that can just tell by the mechanism of injuries that they're gonna need uh, aircraft. So they might make a request. So it's yeah. just gonna, everyone's gonna have to just communicate. Work, work together. Yeah. yeah. And and work we're, together on it. Yeah, just, yeah. just communication. Everyone's working together. It's just not everyone's passing the information uh, as the scene develops so on what, what assets are being requested in. Uh, there isn't a situation of Lutheran versus Parkview. No, okay, no, no, okay. No, no, no. Just want to make sure of that. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 yep. it's no, no, because when I talk to EMS, they don't. If, if, if I'm talking to a Lutheran paramedic in the back of their ambulance working, or we're still in the process of an extrication going on, they don't really care what helicopter they want that victim on an aircraft going to a, a, a trauma center. That's the way it should be, absolutely, yeah. so, so absolutely. I, I, will, I will defend the medics that we have working here. It, it isn't a, you need to call the purple helicopter. They don't They don't care, they, the request is for a helicopter. It's okay. just the two different agencies. And when, when Marshall County does their request, they're gonna call Lutheran 3, mm -hmm. which is up, they got a new helicopter based up in that area. If 
I call Fulton County, they're naturally going to go to Sam first because they're right here in our backyard. Okay. So, so there, there is no conflict in, in, in stickers on the side of the aircraft. Okay. It's just maybe not good communication, uh, deciding who, who's the IC of the, of the scene is, is probably the one of the biggest things. And they're working through that. Yeah, they're working through that. And they also want to make sure that they don't need two helicopters going to one place because that means that someone else well, they need that helicopter. Right. Yeah. So they want to make sure that just one is called and then everything else is available to whatever else is needed. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Anything? Well, there is one more oh. thing with, with Lutheran. Uh, they are going to be offering an EMT mm -hmm. course. Uh, we are going to host that at the fire station. It's going to be at no cost for the course for the fire departments in the county. We're going to break it down. Uh, probably going to be 20, 20 students available. Um, because they have one instructor, so that's what the state allows for instructor per student ratio. And, so and when is that, Tom? I'm sorry? When is that going to it's be? It's going to start this fall. We don't have everything okay. wrapped up. Uh, I'm going to use the fund out of my budget line for uh, transportation education. Uh, Lutheran said they'll provide the instructor. We need to provide the, the books. They're about okay. 250 bucks uh, for the curriculum for, the, for each student. And the most we'll have are five students from our department depending on what the other departments uh, want to get in at. Okay. So, uh, and what they can afford. I, I think that's a good fair fair price. They're paying all, all the instructors hours. It'll start this fall. It'll be two nights a week and it'll run well into the spring, maybe early summer. So Lutheran does have an investment in, in this as well. So them asking for us to pay for our textbooks is really a, a, a good deal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else, Brian? No? no. Water board, John. I tell him I get to say something tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Call the banker. Okay, water board. Met on July the third. Of course, uh, <laughs> they approved the minutes of the June fifth meeting. Blink uh, list was approved. Update by Derek of the board that everything was operating as normal. The write off list for the uh, 215 uh, accounts receivable was presented to the board. And of course, that motion was approved that they accepted those also. Keith had some questions concerning the reserves, interest income, and investment strategies. Uh, the, the board tabled that until our uh, ne their next meeting, I mean, on August, in the August meeting. And it was just that Keith has really come up with some really good ideas pertaining to the money that's kind of being stagnant and that could be invested and make some you know make a little bit of interest money somewhere and I think it's personally I think it's a really good idea uh, whether we can do it or not we'll find out after the next meeting Shaw is going to be involved with telling us what is allowed to be done and can't be done uh, Derek was telling us that the big salt tank project was completed uh, the floor painting project it seems like that's been going on a long time, but it was fine. It's finally completed. Update was presented to Derek to the board on the Fourth Street Tower situation. Cost was estimated at around five thousand eight hundred dollars for the. I'm not gonna say a glitch, but it was a failure of a one of, and of course that's one of the new towers. But it was a failure for a new electronical part that just really made the oh, there's the tank got too low. And then it really just hurt itself trying to establish all the tanks run on the same level. You just don't fill this tank and this tank, and then this tank. Uh, they all they're all maintained at about the, at the same level constantly. And something happened, and I don't know if we're going to get compensated for that or not. Uh, but to see if it's still under warranty, probably not. Update was presented uh, to uh, Derek at the Walmart's uh, dedicated the water line over to the uh, water department. Of course, that's gonna be for the new businesses that are gonna be out in that area. Update was presented to Marvin at the board, contacted with an employee of Duke Energy about getting the grounds fixed at the water plant, which uh, we've been, Derek's been staying on that because as they did put those towers in back there, really tore that ground up. And there's no reason why the city is too, they should have been fixed before now, but there's no reason the city should have to get involved in any expenditures on that ground that uh, Duke tore up. Uh, that date was presented to Derek on employees taking vacations for the month. It was Randy Carr and uh, Randy Wynn. Derek wasn't going on vacation that month. 
An update was presented by Derek and the board on the Rochester Water Department monthly duties for the month of June. And with that, they adjourn the meeting. Any further questions? How did how did the double billing process all work out? You know, it's been it's been. I really just now, I'm I'm saying maybe you know maybe even the next month we might be hearing more. But right now, uh, there hasn't been any significant. We I see Tino at home. Yeah, Tino at home. <laughs> I was gonna say I mean, no. there's not been a. Huge, it's been smooth. It really we, is. Yeah, I mean, there's been certainly some folks Good. that didn't read the information we sent out. I don't, you know, you mean I was supposed to read the paper that you put in that bill that you sent? Yes, you were supposed to read the message Six times that we that sent. We yeah. Said. yeah. So we've had those, but for the most part, went smooth. It's been well. Your smooth. communication was was great so if people read it they yeah they got it and even chance. some that did they still didn't quite it so we've had some folks come in and we actually would visually show them you know print out their bill and really and we've spent the time you know the girls have done that and i got to give kudos to all my girls because they have went above and beyond to try to make sure and, and, and you're going to have the, the, <coughs> the just they're not happy no matter what they don't sure. understand yeah they yeah. think they're getting an extra bill and they're not it is it, they're not getting they're not going to pay any more bills this year than they did last year and uh, so but by and far once they see it john's right it's been it's it went a lot smoother than i ever <laughs> Good. me too yeah but but again it was all the communication yeah it was very good it yes was well communication done. was yes. excellent yes well done. Done. We, yeah. we did that was the very good job focused on was trying to make sure we communicated yeah. so good, good job to you and your personnel and to the water board yeah. Uh, yeah. nice job by it's all well done thank you i will accept that <laughs> <laughs> we were a little terrified moving into july <laughs> yeah i understand um any other questions for john Okay, before we move on into the ordinances, a uh, couple economic development things to throw out. Of course, the pilot uh, truck stop, as you know, has they pretty much become a member of the community now. They had closed on their property on July the 10th, and about July the 11th, you saw a bulldozer dropped off out there. So they will they're working hard to that end out there. One of the subjects on the table at NDOT uh, last week that Carrie and I went to talk to the folks and you know it's one of those things you get the right people and you get them three at a table rather than a hundred in a room you, you tend to get some more information that way and we, we had a really good meeting and if you remember uh, Casey was here asking for a letter of support for turn lanes down there on 25 so the 18 wheelers would be but well we just took that sketch and presented it to the NDOT director and he looked at it and he said, well, we can do that. That's no problem. Cut through all the letters. So we've, we've got it on their agenda. He's now working with Casey. That's going to happen. So those are those are all good things. Uh, those utilities, there were some people working down there this morning along the the road. Yeah. Is yeah. that utility work that's... They're probably doing done? some locates. Oh, they've been doing some more. Uh, they're needing to be, you were correct. It was, and you only know that because the question came to my office about the maps. Uh, is, the is that the NIPSCO was, folks that are? Uh, the last I knew it was sanitary sewer. Uh, they were looking at oh, some boring okay. under there for the sanitary sewer okay. and potentially water. Um, and I'm not sure that Derek got all the information he needed yesterday to relay back to them. And I'm not sure that Rand, I think Randy, you got all the information to them that they needed. But I think okay. it is utilities. I'm not sure about NIPSCO. Okay. Yeah. That, I know definitely municipal utilities. Of course, those folks that are at Hart, the old Hart Shafter and Marks, that's the contracting crew that uh, is working on the, the Nipsco line coming into town. They're redoing that out north or south of town, bringing that in. So that crew will be here for, oh, several weeks yet. Yeah. Uh, then the other thing, uh, Terry mentioned that uh, we are heading to Illinois in the morning. We have now we parlayed with the 900 letters going over there and everything we have three real serious folks and a, and a big one to talk to tomorrow so we're, we're heading to peoria tomorrow for a, for a meeting so we'll we'll keep you apprised of what's going on there but some good things are happening in that and one of the questions for ndot was if we brought somebody out to 31 will they get shut off if they're out there and uh, we were 
happily informed that uh, for 20 years it looks like things will be pretty accessible there. So that was information we had to have. Okay, uh, moving right along then. Uh, no ADA concerns, uh, no legal issues right now. Takes us down to the ordinances and resolutions. We have a, uh, an unfinished ordinance, uh, number 03-2017. Uh, do we have enough people here to add on?